welcome everybody to episode 77. We've got a very important one for you today. Of course, we're going to be talking about this massive thing that's going on with the Chinese property market. Everybody's been asking us, so we're finally going to tell you what we know. And uh, we've got a couple of other interesting things. I got to say, way. the amount of people asking about Evergrande. I appreciate your, your support and I appreciate you guys reaching out. Holy shit. Let's get it out of the way and finally yeah. talk about it. We're going to talk about it <laughs> in depth. Anyway, we've got uh, a couple of interesting things to talk about. The fact is, first of all, that we've moved office. That's why we weren't, uh, our studios moved. We're yeah. on the East Coast. Yep. That's why we didn't have a thing last week. It's been quite the thing, but we're finally all set up. Very happy to say. It's a little later in the day now, so it's we're a little more ragged. The weather's a bit weird, you know, <laughs> like it was raining, raining all day yesterday. Now it's all, yeah, different, nice and sunny today. Anyway, um, we have another announcement. We finally got a sponsor. Yeah, our first sponsor. First sponsor. So without further ado, yeah. um, stay tuned for one minute and we'll yeah. be right Please, back. Please uh, sit through this little advert for us, guys, and we'll be with you in a minute. Today's episode of ADV Podcast is brought to you by Conflict of Nations, which is a really cool online free PvP strategy game. And that's player versus player, so you're going against your friends or people online. You choose a real country to lead in a modern global warfare. And you can fight up to 128 other players in real time in games that can take weeks to complete. So these are long-term strategies. You can use many different units to build your army, like tanks or jets or nuclear submarines. And you can declare war on your neighbors or forge alliances with other players. You can choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the entire world. One thing I really liked was the player versus player aspect. It's really cool to be able to go against your friends or people around the world and see which country actually wins. You can play this game with the same account on both PC and mobile. And you can get an exclusive gift. If you click on the link in the description, you're gonna get 13,000 gold, one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is only available for 30 days, so don't lose time. All right, guys, well, thank you for sitting through that. We're going to now saunter right into it with uh, what's new, of course. Yes, sir. We actually have some pretty good things to talk about uh, today. Would you, would you say pretty important things? Yes, absolutely. There's some funny stuff, too. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I actually want to talk about kiwi fruit. Okay. Do Can you I... guys say kiwi fruit? Because we just say kiwi. Yeah, we say kiwi fruit. Why, why does, is there a different kind of kiwi? A kiwi bird. Yeah, we, But course. would you call it, if you saw a bird, would you say, oh, a kiwi bird? Or would you just say, hey, that's a kiwi? No, if I see a New Zealander, I would say it's a kiwi. Well, why wouldn't you say that's a kiwi person? You don't person? eat a kiwi. You do? No, you just say it's a kiwi. You've never eaten a New Zealander? <laughs> you, anyway. no listen if yeah. a kiwi person why don't you say kiwi person you don't say a kiwi person then why you say, you say kiwi fruit because that's its name it's not because it looks like a kiwi. a kiwi bird and it's furry and stuff is so that why called... they actually call it that yes they're originally from new zealand right no oh i ate like three of Maybe them not. yesterday golden nice. ones they're really good anyway uh i've done a little bit of research turns out the kiwi fruit is uh, quite a thing it's kind of like a mafia can i say something really quick mm -hmm. we didn't go through any of the material with each other today so it's i put surprise. stuff in the media pack and you put stuff in the media pack so i have no idea what he's about to say <laughs> okay now guys kiwi fruit let's talk about what's that thing called it's um Zespri is the brand. Yeah, that's that brand I okay. always see on the stickers. And they have something called, uh, what is it, Golden Sun or Sun Golden? Sun yeah. Gold. Sun, Sun Gold, Gold Kiwis. Those are the best kind. And it turns out that this is kind of like an industry secret because they've made such a good kiwi fruit that you have to license it. If you want to plant a kiwi fruit um, orchard, if you want to do a hectare, you have to pay uh, Zespri a licensing fee um, of... Of a fruit. No, five, oh, because they made it. Yeah, five hundred thousand dollars you have to pay in order to plant a, a hectare of this stuff. So they get a lot of money from licensing. So like four acres. Yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. Anyway, the fact of the matter is they've made this perfect kiwi fruit. Okay, it's supposed to taste great. It's like sun it's gold. Amazing. One. It's amazing. It's, it's like sugar sweet. If you like kiwi fruits, I suppose it's kiwis. right up your alley. Okay. Now yeah. here's the thing. In China, um, now just recently, like a couple days ago. Uh, in Jiangsu province, mm -hmm. a batch Eastern of, China. Yeah, a batch of these kiwis tested positive for COVID nineteen. Why? No, okay. They didn't. What they did. They what? tested positive. Um, so anyway, you they're being sold in a market. They they were being sold in a market. They tested positive for COVID nineteen. No, seriously, they did, and they pulled them off the shelves. And of course, 
Zespri is like in panic mode, trying to assure the public that their stuff's of good quality and is not infected and all that kind of stuff. And, but of course, as you know, in China, you know, it gets out of hand. They constantly blaming the foreigners for infecting China with COVID-19. So this plays into that whole thing, right? So they tested a batch and they, they are uh, COVID-19 positive. But here's the thing. So that, like the surface. Yeah, they obviously test the surface of the kiwi fruit and they're like, oh, it's got COVID on it, right? But, okay, here's the rub. Color me skeptical. Yeah, the same, <laughs> the exact same kiwi fruit, because they all come through Shanghai. That's how they get imported yeah, into China. Yeah, the right? The exact same batch tested negative when it came into Shanghai. Okay, because they, as per the Chinese customs, they disinfect everything, first of all, and they test everything that's coming in. Before they allow it to clear customs, yeah. it must be COVID negative, sure. right? So it was negative, but now it's turned up positive. Okay. Oh, so... Jiangsu is right next to Shanghai, by the yeah. way. So they didn't obviously communicate with each other that they were supposed to say that it had COVID on it. Well, I mean, no. Here's the thing, though. It was actually being stored by a second-tier distributor in Hefei province, okay. which is neighboring yeah. to Jiangsu yeah. province. Okay. No, Hefei is not a province. It's a city. Oh, but, yeah. Hefei city, sorry. In Anhui. My yeah. mistake. In the Hanwei province, yeah. My mistake. Okay. Now, in Hefei. Now, here's the thing. Um, this, this is kind of interesting because, number one, it proves that, you know, China keeps going on about the very... The fact they've defeated COVID, you know, and whenever there's a, an outbreak, it's like one or two people. Or they say like, oh, there's been an outbreak of six people and they lock down the whole cities. And a foreigner gave they, it to them. Yeah, exactly. It's always a foreigner. They go and they test everyone. Everyone's in lockdown again. It's happening more than you know. OK, obviously, it's not just two or three people that are being infected every time. It's a lot of people that are being infected. The fact that fruit, which came in negative has now tested positive for COVID means someone gave that fruit COVID. <laughs> someone shed those virus cells onto yeah, the fruit. That yeah. means that the COVID infections are happening all over China. Yes. Okay. And Either right that there. or it was invented as a... My immediate thing when you just said that, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you didn't tell me about this beforehand so I can have an organic sure, response. Sure. Um, my immediate thing when you said that was that this is a manufactured story to make it look like it's coming from, you know, of course, from imported stuff. Especially since that whole region. I know New Zealand and Australia are two separate entities, but you know how they're really like hating on Australia right now and that whole nuclear sub deal and stuff like that. It's just a good reason to be like skeptical of foreigners and to put hate towards foreigners. Yeah, it's foreigners, foreigners in general. Yeah, yeah especially Doesn't from that where region. Yeah, especially, you know? yeah. But now here's the thing. Now, this is where you might be quite surprised. Okay. Um, one hectare is 2.47 acres, by the way. Okay. So thank you for the help, guys. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, here, here's the thing. Turns out that very specific type of kiwi fruit, you know, that specific sun gold, was stolen from New Zealand and is being planted in Sichuan. Aren't kiwis originally from China? They're definitely from China. Definitely, but not oh, that, that brand. kind. Yeah, yeah. Do you I understand? Gotcha. Like, yeah, yeah. you know how it works. You yeah, yeah. crossbreed yeah, yeah. and you do all this. Oh, kind of stuff. yeah, those special kinds. Yeah, so there's gold. a guy. Let me see. What was his name? His name is uh, Hao Yu Gao. Okay. He bought an orchard um, in New Zealand. Okay? Oh, okay. And he licensed to you know produce that sun gold stuff, or whatever, to plant it. But he smuggled cuttings oh, from to graft. Yeah. He smuggled them into China. Yeah, because you can graft them on a normal, normal kiwi tree. Yeah, well, whatever. He smuggled the... What is it? There's an actual word for it. Um, yeah, let's see. It, it just says... I'll, I'll find it exactly what it is he smuggled. Budwood. He budwood, had taken okay. budwood of sun gold kiwi to China, supplied growers, and, um, you know, it turns out they've got something like 5,000 hectares currently growing in Sichuan of these knockoff kiwis. Knock off real kiwi. I mean, they'll taste good. Yeah, I mean, but it's like a, it's a copy. This yeah. is supposed to be licensed, right? So he stole the cuttings and took it into China. Of course, there was a lawsuit about it because what happened was the Sun Gold employees started to hear rumors that it was being grown in China. And then the guys that were growing it were like, yeah, we're growing it. Come take a look. And they actually t let the Sun Gold employees go and really? take a look. Yeah. And then they tied the guy to this gal, whoever he is who had opened this uh, orchard in uh, New Zealand. He, he basically bought, he'd bought this Gagged orchard them. and he'd stolen the cuttings and taken. This was back in 2016. Anyway, the fact of the matter, it's been going I was going to say, because when I was mm -hmm. in like 2010 to 2016 or whatever, my mother-in-law always used to buy sun gold kiwis from New Zealand and pay a lot of money because they were so yeah, good to yeah. feed them to me. It was, yeah, yeah. They are great. So, I mean, here's the thing. This is, remember the pineapple thing? Yeah, the Taiwan pineapple thing. And the reason was that they'd been knocking off these pineapples, yeah. but they just weren't selling the local ones well enough. So what they did was they like put this 
bullshit rhetoric, you know, nationalist rhetoric to basically ban the imports of pineapples from Taiwan so that they could sell their locally produced ones that no one was And buying. then they use propaganda to say, we don't need Taiwanese pineapples, our local pineapples. Remember all the yeah, headlines? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. So I think news. this could be the same thing. Yeah. Think about it. First yeah. of all, it gives them an opportunity to blame the West for importing COVID again, okay, to yeah. ramp up some anti-foreigner rhetoric, to kind of force this poor company this is interesting, to, yeah. to, to kowtow to what's going on, you know, like, oh, we're so sorry, you know, we'll make sure. And then they have to put all these reparations. But at the same time, then they can say, why buy that? Because we have the same fruit here. There are probably multiple motivations. You know what this yeah. reminds me of is that rap we covered in the last episode that has eight languages in it. They got yeah. a budget to make a propaganda piece for the yeah. CCP. And then they're like, let's use up all the money on whatever we want to do and just make a, like a, a thing that covers lots of bases. Yeah. It's kind of what they do with this kind of stuff. Yeah, it is. Propaganda, COVID propaganda, uh, bolstering local economy, yeah. counterfeiting. Because it's very easy to destroy a, a brand's reputation yeah. in China, a foreign brand's reputation. Because you is. either say that they've done something to insult China, yeah. or, oh, they've well, now no one's going to buy COVID. imported No, Kiwis. of course not. Now, no. this is out in the news. The Global Times put it out there and bolstered this whole story. That's a state media mouthpiece. Yes. So everybody's like, holy shit, this New Zealand Kiwi, these New Zealand Kiwis had COVID. So right. if you're a local Chinese person, you're going to be like, there's no way in hell I'm buying no. any New Zealand kiwi because it might have COVID. Correct. So it completely destroys the market for Zespri, you know, and then they can sell their knockoff pirated kiwis instead. Well, you know what works out too is that like we've, mm -hmm. I mean, the CDC and scientists have proven it's it's quite hard to pass around COVID on food. Yes. But China's leaned into that hardcore oh, in the past. Yeah. So they've already convinced the populace that you can get food very easily from, from or yeah, COVID, COVID from, from food. food. Mm -hmm. And recently mm -hmm. we've got some documents from China that they are now passing around a new, uh, what I think a new, uh, new approach that they're going to take. And yeah. I'm calling this, guys. Right. If you guys have your finger on the pulse of what China blames uh, America for, like where COVID came from, yeah. it's going to move. It's going to be tied to the Fort Detrick thing, which yeah. they keep saying. But it's going to move just from the inklings I'm seeing. It's going to move from that to, yes, okay, the first outbreak was in Wuhan, mm -hmm. okay? Because they have to admit that. Yeah, eventually they do, yeah. The, the, the evidence is just like yeah, insurmountable. Yeah. So what they're going to say is, yes, it came from, or I mean, it started in Wuhan, but it's going to be from imported U.S. foods that entered the Huanan seafood market right across the street from the right. lab. Right, right. Um, that's, mark my words, that's what's going to happen because there's a lot of uh, documentation going around saying that. Sure. It's kind of like testing the waters, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting stuff. That's yeah, a good story. Exactly. I like that. Anyway, yes. Uh, so that's that's the whole kiwi fruit thing. So again, tested negative when it came into Shanghai, but suddenly it just tested positive. Uh, so in other words, the infections are happening within China. Yes. Uh, let me it won't be seen like that way from the no. locals. No, we yeah. got a bunch more stuff, but let's just run through a couple of questions here. Okay, go uh, for it. Tess at Turn says, could you please explain, and he names a shill YouTuber. Yeah. Is he the prop CCP propaganda minister's response to your series of podcasts? Uh, not him in particular. All of them, really. All of them. Yeah. Um, that's a very low-level one sure. that you brought up. I think you're maybe not familiar with some of the higher-level ones. Yeah. Uh, Charles Womack says, you guys are 100% right. After being, this is another one, mm -hmm. after being a shill for the CCP, an unnamed person who, who has escaped to the U.S. Funny how he always criticizes the U.S., but is here now. It is yeah. ironic, and you'll see that happen with a lot of them. Yeah, good old floppy hat vegetable lord. Yeah, um, I like the lord. Yeah. He's <laughs> a lord know. now. You know, the fact of the matter He's is... He's been knighted with a cucumber. <laughs> yeah, as much as, as much as a lot of these shills keep saying how bad uh you know the west is and how great china is it's funny how they always run away when they realize they can't achieve what they want there right. if they're looking for certain freedoms or perhaps a more um, effective vaccine Correct. um it's just you know it's a very double standard thing if you're gonna love a place you're gonna love a place i love china i really Me too. do Me too. but i'm not going to say that uh you know there it's a better place to live because it's certainly not especially no. not under the ctp absolutely not yeah. Charles Womack, yeah. mm -hmm. Yuri Thank Bezmanov. You. Um, yeah, we know about that. Tacit yeah. turn. Seeing y'all don't have enough merchandise, can people have and people have their own individual tastes? Can you make a high resolution PNG of the ADV helmets logo for purchase and download? Maybe yeah, we can do that. Absolutely, we'll make stickers and everything. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Let's um, do we it. do have stickers available on our Patreon. Oh yeah, we have the right. ADV uh, Patreon.com/slash/ADV podcast. You can get a sticker, and everyone gets a sticker when they sign up. 
Yeah. That's a new thing that we've... Remember we did that? Yeah, we yeah. did. <laughs> Don't know how I forgot it works. we did that, but we did. Yeah. No, they sent us an email that it works. So. Okay, cool. PowerShift says, I didn't realize the CCP's 2025 plan meant a massive economic meltdown and collapse of the CCP. <laughs> My bad for misunderstanding maniacal It's not as bad as you think. We're no. going to get into that shortly, yeah. But don't tune, Don't turn away. Like, yeah. there's... It is, it's actually worse than you think, but mm-hmm. the immediate... Yeah. problem is not as bad as you think. We've been waiting to talk about the Evergrande thing specifically because we needed to just get our heads around it and make yeah. sure that we weren't being uh, you know, alarmist. Or... And not to toot our own horn, but that's what separates us from a lot of the other people you might watch is that we don't jump on something an hour after it happens. Mm. We need to understand it first and talk to people in China yeah. about that situation to see who has been affected, why it's happening, yeah. not be like, oh, t- today, you know, headline <laughs> sure. reading. I can't stand channels like that, to be yeah, honest. exactly. Uh, Dylan, first super chat, guys. Often chat on Patreon. Hey, Dylan, how's it going? We talk all the time. Thank you. Uh, what will it take for the West to finally recognize Taiwan? Uh, what would be a breaking point? It would have to be probably a wartime scenario. Yeah. More and more people are starting to cozy up to Taiwan. Not, not recognize that. Yeah, but it's it's nice to see that. Yes. Okay, so yep. um, we're still in what's new. We're not we going to just jump into the next one, but I, I want you to see this despicable... you got to go to the title of the book, bro. Oh, yeah. Is that the title of the book is... Uh, okay, let's go look. Do you want to know what the kids are reading in China? Okay. Well, yeah. Let's not let's not be one of those guys that say this, this is, is a popular. children's book. This is not popular media. I don't this know. This exists. I, I don't know, man. Because look, when I was um, doing private teaching in China, right, mm-hmm. and I went to uh, teach this kid. Uh, well, she must have been ten, around about ten years old. She was showing me the books that her grandfather was giving her, and it's all that like Xiao Hong crap. Yeah. And it's the same as this. Yeah, but it's, it's not, worse. It's not popular. Kids but, would rather read about Beyblade and shit. I know, shit. but we're talking about a wealthy, um, upper class, okay, child here. I mean, their parents are really rich. It's not middle class. It was a rich, rich kid. Grandfather's giving her these books to read as her, like, children's books when she's 10 years old. Oh, yeah, and it's got, exists. It's got, you know, basically Xiao Hong luring Japanese into a trap <laughs> to, like, roll a boulder on them and kill them and right. shoot them and, like, yeah, oh, celebrate. Yeah, that's okay. absolutely you what have they to used understand. to read. Yeah, they used to read that, and they still read it. Like yeah, children. This is yeah, a it was children's a band book or something. This is a children's book from China. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I just you have to agree with me that we're not the kind of guys that go and say that everything is black and white. I didn't say everyone's yeah. reacted. Children in China but are this reading exists. this. Yes, whether correct. it's a hundred of them or a million of them doesn't matter. Children correct. in China are reading this. Is what I'm saying. Okay. This is uh, dedicated to the 70th anniversary of the founding of China. Yes, yeah, so, so this is an older one because... Oh, otherwise... it would have been 2000, 2020. Mm, yeah. 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 2000, 2021? No. Mm, no. 70th anniversary? Oh, the 70th. Yeah. Oh, so it's not the Communist Party. No. It's the founding of China. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's, it's new. Okay. Um, hey, anyway. So this is... Uh, I want to read the title. Oh, you want to read the title? Okay. What is Let's go Chinese? back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shan Shan de Hongxing. So that means like... Mm-hmm. It, the shining red star okay yeah. <laughs> continue star. it says the english right there so uh, this is uh two pages from the book we mm-hmm. got um the protagonist which is a little communist boy yes he's doing the bidding of the ccp and what he's going to do is, uh, is arson yeah. so what he does is says at night um <laughs> he quietly sneaked into hu han san hu han san's what room room tied the drunken Hu Han son's hands and feet and poured oil on his bed. So, you know, the whole point is, and you see this a lot in these little commie books, is it's all about getting revenge. And it feeds Landlords, into that, yeah, educators. It, it just, it feeds into that whole, like, revenge yes. thing. Remember right. that one about the little girl who gets her grandfather arrested as yes. a spy or whatever? Yes. It's always that kind of crap, right? Right, right. So anyway, the this fact is from two years ago. Uh, from two years yeah, ago. Okay, so he obviously got this guy drunk because he's supposed to, probably a traitor or something, right? So he gets him drunk. When he's drunk and asleep, ties his hands uh, together, then pours petrol all over him, <laughs> and then <laughs> says, "Don't threw yeah. a lit candle on the bed, and with a boom, the flames flared up, and Huhan San ended his sinful life in flames." So, I mean, is this the kind of thing that you want your kids reading <laughs> how to murder people? Of course. <laughs> wow. Because that's apparently a patriotic communist thing to do is to murder people that you think are traitors or whatever the case Correct. may be. And yeah, now this is not a mandated book in the education system, but it yeah. exists and it is, it's available. It's widely yeah. available. Sure. And it's not demonized. 
Well, I mean, it's not the, fringe. I mean, the fact that it's there to celebrate the seventieth. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's sanctioned. I'm saying China, it's sanctioned. It's hundred percent sanctioned. Government sanctioned. Yes, it's. Uh, it is a kids' book for the kids, and it, they want them to read it. It's the kind of thing you you want to give your child if you want them to be a uh, kind of patriotic. Yes, correct. Give them these books to read. I can think of some people that would give their kids that book. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay. it's it's pretty disturbing. It so is. I just wanted to put that out there. Remember, I this it was is funny until I actually just thought about it. <laughs> no, it just, I mean, th this is the kind of thing that the government of China is condoning. Yeah. Okay. And this is the kind of atmosphere that children are growing up in. Yeah. Yeah. And so you always have to understand that that shapes a nation. It does. No, okay? it does. If this trickles down into pop culture, like kids' literature, then you yeah. know what's at the top. Remember, we right? did the whole commie rabbit thing. Yeah. And all that? It's that's a thing. When, it's the same thing. When children's cartoons are all about, like, and I mean, violence. very young. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have pure violence, though. He Man and but Ninja it's evil Turtles, violence. But it's, it's yeah. flames in the reflecting in the eyes as you watch your enemies burn to death. Yeah, no. The fact of the matter is, like, all those cartoons. Yeah, they may be violent, but they, no one dies in them. Number one, no, never. No, no. And it's all about like a good message at the end of the day and selling they're catching toys. the bad guy. Yeah, yeah they catch toys. a bad guy and they sell toys. But it's not burning entire encampments of people. No, it's not killing people. It's not killing people. It's this not is like killing vengeful people. murder. Yeah. This is murder. Yeah, that's a big difference. You got to understand. So, and it's based on reality. That's the problem. He Man's not based on reality. No, this is based on reality. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's when what's new. So we're going to move on to our main topic then, and we'll let's do it. You ready? Uh, yeah. No, okay. it's not the main topic. What are you talking about? Yeah, soft about? power hour now. What do you mean? Yeah, we got to go into soft power hour. Why are you skipping all the good stuff? That what I good stuff? In? There's nothing good stuff in there. You want to go? Wait. Okay, we'll go back Burke. to what's new. Oh, yeah, sorry. We're going back to what's There's new, two guys. more what's news. I, I apologize. Jump I thought the, the Burke thing was part of the main this thing. This is what happened. Winston and I did not go over the material with each other today. <laughs> so some of the pieces are from me, okay. some are from him. Now, remember last time we told you that we'd talk about Burke. Yeah, let me set the stage here. Go for it. So I discovered this random town outside of Huizhou where I used to live. going to play it in the background. Yeah. And it turns out it was a counterfeit town. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a model. I'm talking about the entire town is literally a counterfeit of another town. Yes. So there's a town in, called Hallstatt in Austria. And I found out that they were making a real estate project in, in outside of Huizhou to attract very rich investment yeah. in this shithole town mm. on the outskirts of a place called Bolo. Bolo, I remember. Yeah. It's shitty. And I'm not, no offense to the, to the people or anything there, but it's really bad. It's polluted. It's dirty. Yeah. It's like industry. Yes. So they plop that. You can see how gross it's it is. Fake flowers. They plop. If you see on the other direction, we always used to avoid showing the bad parts. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, because we we're to... trying to show China as yeah. being this nice place. If it's you actually... look in the other direction, yeah, it's just it's just industry. Anyway, yeah. so we found this town, mm. and it's like uh, there's a fake church there. There's all these yeah. uh, houses. This, this, this is, is what's inside church. the fake church. Let me get us out of there sure. so you can see. Uh, and we, we these houses cost like a million dollars. These apartments, right. and no one bought them. It's yeah. a ghost town. Now, before you guys wonder, when you look at this place, it actually looks nice on camera, but it's very, very badly constructed. Oh, yeah. When you, when you walk up close, all the walls are badly painted and cracked in. So, anyway. Um, well, I just want to say, keep in mind, there's, there's I'd say, a thousand units of housing. Yes. And that's the point. It was to sell those. We went around on a house tour, mm. pretended to be, like, prospective buyers. Yeah. And they set up this whole town to where it's, like uh, there's a restaurant there and everyone's decked out and stuff and every year it just degraded it more, and more and more and more and more towards the end we went to this church and we saw that they put on they feature this is a feature what do they call it when you have an art show it's just like a gallery a gallery yeah they put on a gallery yeah for someone that they made up as a famous painter yes called burke burke some uh, german guy i mean look just look he's at a this real art. person yeah he's a real person and he he wasn't there but they had like pamphlets and stuff down there of this famous german yeah um artist they're like look at his like works burke. reinhold burke hold right. or something burke Hart, but reinhold? they called him burke yeah burke yeah now look at that beautiful art this is this he's an older man he's not this is not a child no Look at this beautiful art that looks like a kindergartner drew it with a finger paint or something like that. We wanted to show you this because it's an example of a white monkey gig. Oh, big time white monkey. Oh, yeah, here. Here's like Reinhold. This is what I was talking about. How much have... was those paintings? Yeah, oh, there he is. What's oh, no, name? I don't want to show. Wait, wait. I want to get him. I want to get his attention because I'd like to talk to him about okay. how, this, how this happened. Burkhard Eiswald Burke. Okay. Yeah. Now, they featured him as like some big artist over here. Um, and if you look around, the, this artwork is atrocious. I mean, look at that. 
I'm sorry, but like, it's just... <laughs> it's, I'm wicked mad at art, and honestly, I could do better than and that. And remember, they had price tags on all of these. Yeah, now, yeah, they were selling them. I think so, I saw 2,000 two RMB. They were selling them for a lot. Now, you can also tell because of the humidity down in uh, southern China, all, them, all of them are like wrinkled. Look at this, this so-called art, okay? I know artists can be all like impressionist or whatever, and they can, expressionism, they can put up whatever they want and call it art, right? But this is really not that. I mean, what you're see if you're just it a looks listener. Like, you know when you just scribble and the colors. Yeah, when you're just effing around. And it looks like it's reached the point of no return now. When it starts to get brown and there's like nothing you can do to re recover it, that's what it looks so like. So keep in mind, this is for millionaire investors yes. that moved into a pr or potentially bought investment properties mm -hmm. in a fake counterfeit town yes. that go down on Sunday to the church. Yeah. And instead, the inside of this fake church is an art gallery for a three year old's painting. But yeah. actually, that three-year-old's a six-year-old man. It looks, and that's supposed to be the Canton Tower there, right? Yes. In that picture, and it looks atrocious. Yeah. I, I really think I could do better right now. No, I, I absolutely could. I'm not being yeah. cocky. Yeah. This is some of the worst artwork I've ever seen in my life. And OGs will have already seen this. We wanted to bring this back up as a great example of, as a foreigner, a lot of people go to China to reinvent themselves as foreigners yes, yes. because you can dupe people. Yes, you can. The, in this same place, go back to that so okay, you can sorry. just play the whole clip from the beginning. I want to tell the, the, the toucan story real quick. Oh, the toucans, yeah. So as you can see right here, as we're walking around, the center, there was not, a, not only an art gallery, but there was a place where you could buy, um, buy what's it like called? Like knickknacks, kind of knick souvenirs, souvenirs yeah, right? Yeah. So you'd expect, okay, I'm going to go buy a little figurine of the Hallstatt Tower. Sure. I'm going to go buy a figurine of some Austrian man farming. Yeah. But they had stuff in there that was just random selections of crap that you'd find at like a flea market right. in the U.S. And they had this glass toucan. Yeah. And I think it was being sold for $25,000. It yeah. was just a shit glass toucan that you, you would buy it for $5 at a flea market or an old lady's yard sale. Right, right. There was no provenance to this. They made some, some up. She came over, because I asked the lady, she came over with a piece of paper and they had this shit printout yeah. of some random artist that probably didn't make this thing. Yeah. And again, people buy this up I because remember they think... Prices on these were ridiculous. They were, they were like five thousand RMB yeah, on some of them. I think it's about a thousand US dollars. Mm. I remember seeing that for like one of these finger paintings. Okay. Right. And again, it's like you say, it's a white monkey thing, but it's just kind of hilarious. And we told you, by the way, there is a full episode about this where you yeah, can go it's one see. of our earliest episodes. Yeah. We just what was it called this. again? It was called uh, um, How bad is piracy? Piracy in China. In China. ADV on China. ADV China, yeah. yeah. Piracy. You can see us riding there, walking around, talking. Yeah, you can to see people. the whole town. Yeah, yeah. We show if the whole town. If you want to check it out. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, that's. We thought we'd just uh, show you that in what's new. So well, it popped up last episode, so we figured yeah. we'd show over. And there's a lot of new people that haven't seen these episodes. So. That's true. Bloody Burke. Yeah. What a useless Burke. artist. I'm. I'm. I know it's not good to criticize people's art because it's all. Well, I was about to say his art is about as bad as my old Chinese rap. Yeah, you that's, know? that's true. We all think we can do something special. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Anyway, uh, let's move on then to our main section now, which is uh, Soft Power Hour. Yes. So let's do it. Soft Power Hour, where we talk about how China is uh, trying to change your mind and uh, through various different ways and means. Except you there's know? still more. There was more? Just we'll, we'll play it at the end. We'll go at the end. Yeah, we'll play okay. it. We won't forget about that. Okay, so we're talking about Evergrande here, everyone. Let's get back on track. Now, for those of you who don't know Evergrande, it's this massive, massive, massive property developer. Okay, I'm going to put this in the back. It's China's biggest property de developer, actually. Uh, both Seamilk and myself have made multiple videos about China's real estate. Uh, Seamilk actually purchased a house. I did. Uh, apartment. An apartment, sorry. I keep saying house. You, you don't really buy houses in China. You buy apartments. And you don't really buy them. You lease them. You lease, you know, we should get the terminology Bro. right. What? Bro. What? There's a German book. Yes. By Burkhard Eiswald. That's him. I just oh, yeah. Googled. Which is praising the Silk Road and condemning the West to double morale. Really? Do you yeah, think it's the same guy? He's a shill. Is it the same guy? Well, I looked up his artwork, right? Well, if yeah. you search his name uh -huh. in the book, mm -hmm. look what it comes up with. Oh, it's got some of this crappy art? Oh, my word. That's terrible. If that's <laughs> we'll really I'll dive him. into it later. Yeah, we're going to have to look into it. Anyway, we've got to get back to this yeah, whole thing. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, the Chinese real estate market is very, very, very strange. Okay? Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're paying uh, pounds for pennies, if that makes sense. 
Yes. When you purchase an apartment in China, you're paying uh, a king's ransom for a very shitty product at the end of the day. Correct. Okay? And I can say that with absolute fact because if you compare what you can buy for the same amount that it costs for a tiny little apartment in Shenzhen, for instance, you can buy a beach front property in the US or in France or anything like that. It's absolutely ridiculous how expensive a tiny apartment is in Shenzhen. Yeah. You know, you can buy a mansion almost anywhere in the world, even in first tier countries. Yeah. Like, you know, if you, you know, to buy the same small apartment that's And keep actually, in mind the average salary in Shenzhen is what is like uh, $1,200 a month or something. Yeah, exactly. So it's a crazy, crazy thing. And it was always very mind boggling to me, but it makes sense uh, at the end of the day because real estate is really part of China's economic engine. It's the one thing that people can invest in that has like sure returns on it, right? One, one could say, it's not free real estate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, basically, let me, let me break this down to you guys, okay? We'll get that out of the, out of the way. Out of the burk ground. Yeah, no, out of the burk ground, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> when you buy real estate in China, up in, at least for the last couple of decades, you are guaranteed to up your money, okay? Guaranteed. There's no way you're going to lose money, okay? On top of that, your returns are huge, okay? Something like 15% a year. And in some cases, it doubles in a year. Depending and if, on you, the if you look at a company like Evergrande, it's the second biggest real estate company, right? You're going to yeah. have more faith in something like yeah. that. Is too. it the second biggest? It's I thought it was the biggest. What's I'm the biggest sure one? I'm pretty sure it's the second biggest. Really? Yeah. Let's check that's, that out. Let's get our facts true. straight here. Go I don't want to... Well so anyway, this has led to a massive speculation market. Okay, so what people yeah, do second. is to say, which yeah. is the biggest one? Wanda? Um, let's find out. It could it be Kinky? It's probably Kinky. Wanda. Yeah. Go ahead. You talk anyway. About it. Um, so yeah, Evergrande is the second biggest one. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what happens is, uh, first of all, people can't afford these apartments. No one can on a normal salary. You can't just go and if you're earning like whatever, 12,000 US dollars a year, you can't go and buy a, a property where your mortgage is something like... I don't know, 6,000 a month or 3,000 a month, depending. It's ridiculous, right? So what people do is they get generations of family to club money together. They borrow from uncles, aunts, left and right, borrow from banks, country, all that. Country garden holdings. Okay, yeah. that's, that's bizarre. Yeah. Okay, country garden holdings. Anyway, so you get all these uh, generations to pull money together to put down for your deposit so you can actually afford this thing. And so it's like a multi-generational thing that's paying for this one apartment, right? That's right. But then people tend to buy them and then sell them when the price goes up a little bit. And then mm -hmm. they take whatever they've earned from selling that apartment. They would have made a lot of profit. And then they buy multiple any, apartments. Any person I know with money in China yeah. does this. Yeah, and they will buy them in smaller tier cities where it's a bit more affordable. Because they can't, yeah. for instance, buy something in Shenzhen. But they'll go to like uh, Huizhou or they'll go to somewhere else. And they buy multiple properties and it's the same deal. They don't even rent them out most of the time. It sits empty. It's not even furnished. It doesn't even have cladding on the walls. Nope. It's just an empty apartment. They buy it as an investment. And then they sell it in a year or two when the prices have gone up enough. And then they buy more. Yes. Right? And that's kind of how it works. And people speculate. So what you've got is this weird situation where apartments are crazy overinflated on the price. Everywhere you go. If you want to go just buy an apartment to live, you're screwed. It's yeah. really, really, really difficult because yeah. it's so expensive because it is an investment for everybody. Okay, Now, Evergrande has got to this point where they owed too much money. Most of these real estate um, developers, the way they work is it's this weird circular thing. The government leases them land. Okay, So the government goes and clears up this land. They either kick people off give them compensation, whatever the case. Sometimes they just kick them off, don't give them anything. If they know people, they're hooray, okay? Got a piece of land, then the government goes to Evergrande and says, you lease this, um, this land for X amount of money for 70 years. So Evergrande pays the government a lot of money. And that's what actually drives local government economies uh, is this land grab kind of thing. That's what keeps them going, okay? So it's very profitable. And that's why they keep going around and kicking people off new bits of land to sell to companies like Evergrande. Then what Evergrande does is they draw up the plans mm -hmm. and say, we're going to install X amount of units here. Mm -hmm. Okay, So many buildings, so many gardens, so many apartments. And then they sell these unfinished apartments. They don't even exist anymore. They haven't even broken ground yet. Nope. Okay, But they have a big sales event. This is where a lot of white monkey jobs happen, where people go to pretend to play music. Or, you or know, Burks go to put their artwork yeah, up. Burke, Burke puts his artwork up there. Literally that. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's what it is. 
investors go in and they have a big party. They always have these big sort of like sales parties. People go there and they buy these apartments that don't exist yet. So they put their money down, okay? Evergrande takes their money and uses that to start to, you know, build stuff and also to pay for the next lease that they're doing. And they take everyone's money before anything's been delivered. But of course, this kind of catches up to them eventually, okay? Because they're selling things that don't exist, and it takes time to build these things, and sometimes they don't get finished, and then the money stopped coming in, and then they have to pay their suppliers, and they build up a lot of debt because they just willy-nilly borrow money all over the place. And then they see, oh, look, we're a huge company. We've got a lot of money. Let's just randomly do other stuff. So, for instance, Evergrande has its own soccer team, football team, that they sponsored and, and made. They started an electronic vehicle, an EV, electronic car company like Tesla, something like that, which turns out to be a massive farce, and it was just a big thing to get invested in. It's actually, yeah, that's a whole other thing, but there's a yeah. huge EV car bubble in China to the point where the CCP now is saying, please stop making EV companies because they don't really exist. No, they don't. Like, with the Evergrande <laughs> one specifically, people went in and like spied on the factories, and they yeah. weren't actually producing anything. Are we surprised? No, not at all. No. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, they've got all these different random things they decide, oh, we're just going to do this, we're just going to do this, taking p investors' money as if it's free money all the time, and never really producing anything. Thing. So now they're at $300 billion of debt, huge amounts, and they can't pay their suppliers. And so their suppliers are like, listen, we're not going to work unless you give us money. So for instance, the guys who come and paint all the apartments, what do they do then? They're like, okay, well, we can't pay you. So what we'll do is we'll give you um, X amount of apartments as payment, but apartments that haven't been built yet, for instance. Or we're going to give you X amount of parking spaces, because believe it or not. Yeah, it's a commodity. Parking spaces are very expensive. So my parking space mm -hmm. costs 250,000 RMB. Let me yeah. see how much that is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I used to park my Suzuki Swift. Yeah. RMB to USD. So my parking space costs $38,000. Yeah, 38,000 US dollars Correct. for a parking space. Now that was massaged into the, the price of my apartment, but that literally was mm. a parking spot that I had to fork over 38 grand for to park a car yeah. that costs $10,000. I know, isn't it crazy? <laughs> yeah. Look, if you've lived in China, you will understand. The, the parking situation is a nightmare, especially cities were built before cars were yeah. a thing. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of like your, my old apartment complex, you just could never be guaranteed a parking. You'd sometimes have to wait. I'd have to wait outside my own apartment complex for up to like an hour and a half, two hours, just to wait for someone to drive out so I could drive in. It was infuriating. And I even paid a monthly fee to park there. I paid for that. Yeah. You know, and you have to yeah, pay. I remember. And every time you go in and yeah. come out, yeah. you have to pay as well. And I live there. If you don't buy the parking spot. Yeah. yeah. So, But if you buy a parking spot, they put like a little, like a... a oh, I have my a, number. Yeah, you know, the number You know what's bullshit thing? though is they right. make these freaking pillars. Yes. And they are so tight. Yeah. Even for like a pretty small car. So yeah. people scrape the hell out of them. And those pillars end up having like concave yeah, like they edges. Yeah, they do. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is they're basically giving away these, uh, in other words, they're kind of liquidating in a way. Because what they're doing is they're taking their assets that they have to give us payments and assets they don't have, like future projects and giving them away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. As in lieu of payment, basically. Right. So <clears> you've got this ridiculous situation. They also had wealth management, um, you know, products which they were selling so in other words you know you can invest in this wealth management product from them and you'll get like a 13 percent return correct so they had this company as well and they were in fact it turns out they were forcing all of their staff to invest in these wealth management they packages. do they do this you, you and this know, is not this is not the stranger i mean this yeah. is not the only company that does yeah. this and it, it was at a point to a point where they were like look you must invest x amount every month of your salary into these wealth management products and if you don't we're just we're actually just not going to even pay you that money you're just going Correct. to lose the money yeah. so you, so you might as well might as well do it so they were doing all this kind of underhanded shady crap uh and they were using all that money that was coming in from all the wealth management stuff as well to continue on with their business mm -hmm. as their cash flow so they're basically playing with investors' monies without really the idea of ever paying them back. Like, you know, that was in the back of their minds. They're like, yeah, we'll pay them back eventually. But, you know, it was kind of like a, they didn't really care. It's China. Yeah, you know. China often works like this. The economy yeah. is built in the, I hope you, after Winston's little lecture here, I hope you understand that most of how money works in China, you don't have to be an economics expert. No, I'm not. No, I'm not to, under, to understand that this is, Base the entire economy is basically based on speculation, yeah. and you can say, "Oh, Western Western economies are like that too." 
but there's material things behind that that end up materializing and in China a lot of this stuff doesn't come to fruition no and it's right? very low quality if it does and yeah. it's just a it's just and this nonsense. is a high level company very high level yeah so anyway it gets to the word gets out that um, they're kind of skint they can't pay their uh, you know money they you yeah. know they got all this debt they can't pay back investors for instance and of course this rattled the whole market People were protesting. In fact, I can put some of that in the background here. Yeah, These just run people. this clip while we... The interesting thing is pro protesters turned up at the Evergrande... Um, Keep in mind, protesting is a no-no in yeah, China. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know what happened to these particular protesters here that turned up outside of the Evergrande headquarters? Uh, they were bussed away. The police came and put them all on a bus and bussed them away. Just get them out of there. Yeah, just get them the hell out of there. Um, so they were bussed away. They had a situation where people in Shenzhen broke into the Evergrande... The employees of Evergrande, broke into the their big building over there and they were chanting, give us our money back, give us our money back. And they were like lying on the floor and all that kind of stuff. People are pissed off. Can I, can I remind everyone of something? What? Winston and I have always said that if there was going to be some sort of upheaval in China, mm -hmm. it's not going to be because their freedoms are being taken no. away. It's not going to be because the internet's blocked. It's not going to be because of what you perceive is important to you. Yeah. The only way that China is going to have some sort of political upheaval is through economic collapse and, and devastation. devastation. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, no, honestly, uh, my you, point is, if yeah. you look at this, look, Chinese people can't protest. No. You get arrested, it'll F up your entire life, yes. right? But look at look at this, they are protesting. And that's because you have to understand it's that money. This, when it comes to money, that's a different story. Because you, the you CCP mess. has promised that people can have money and then they can take away every freedom they want. Yeah. But as long as that they have money. But and when you take that life. away, yeah. Yeah. then it's all over. Exactly. So now they've taken people's money away. You have to understand that a lot of people have taken their entire family fortune and invested in not only properties and stuff from Evergrande, but these stupid financial packages that they have. These like... You know, where you pay in, it's just like investing, you know. And you if get you go free to, real estate. <laughs> no, but you know, like if you go to your bank and you invest with a bank and mutual funds or whatever, you know, and you get a certain return. Yeah, of course. That's what Evergrande's been offering, yeah. these financial packages. And people are paying Through in. a corporation. Yes, through a Not corporation. Not through a government, no. keep that in mind. So you pay in and you're supposed to get 13% back. That's a very high return, right? Yeah, so it's huge. when you've got this, this idea of 13% back... Now, what people have been doing is they've been drawing their money out of the banks, taking their money from all their savings, from their aunts, their uncles, their their grandfathers, their grandmothers, and putting them into these mute, these stupid uh, financial packages that Evergrande has been offering. Here you got them inside the building and stuff. Yeah, they hours. actually, they breached the building. And so what's happened is you have people now who are sitting there hearing that, uh, you know, Evergrande's going back bankrupt, and they're worried that they'll never get their money back. Right. Okay, which is probably true for a lot of people. Right. And so this has actually led to some people committing suicide, some people attempting to commit suicide. People are just completely out of it right now. They cannot believe what's going on because they've trusted Evergrande, you know, and now they're potentially losing all this. Now, before we continue, I must say, I've spoken to family members uh, in China that actually own Evergrande property, and it's not affecting them. If you own the property already, if it's already been built, if you're in possession of it, things seem fine. It's all the people that are waiting for their project to finish. The people that have already paid Which down. Which is a big chunk. Yeah. And they've paid a huge deposit down on this so-called apartment that hasn't materialized yet. Right? Correct. Um, and it's people that have invested in all these other weird things that Evergrande does. Okay? So here's the thing. The Chinese government is in a very, very precarious situation. And I got to say why. Yeah, please. It's 2% of the economy. This? It's, yeah. It's massive. It's yeah. huge. Right? It's also 7% of the real estate. Yeah. You know, so think about that. Yeah, for the whole of China. Yeah. It's massive. So the Chinese government's in a very bad position right now. First of all, the number one thing that the Chinese government cares about is stability. Okay. Yes. They cannot have social disharmony or social dis disability, uh, what am I saying, destabilization. So they need to make sure they cannot have everyone protesting, everyone losing all their money and going crazy and committing suicide and doing whatever, being, you know, they need people to be That's satisfied. That's not what's happening in this video, YouTube. Yeah. Do not flag this. No, these are people that are camp sleeping. camping out in the, uh, They're just chilling in out. the Evergrande, yes. you know, building, waiting for, for their like, money. answers, you know, yeah. about their money. So they cannot allow this instability to happen okay the chinese government but they also cannot come out and just bail out evergrand 
And the reason they cannot come out and publicly bail out Evergrande, in other words, pay their debts off and just kind of let Why? them continue. Well, number one, China's been pushing against this whole idea of capitalism and billionaires and big corporations and private monopolies companies now and, and monopolies. They've been pushing against this now for the longest time. It's a communist government. Yeah, because now they're trying to push socialism, com yeah. communism, all that. They're trying Bringing to say, them back. this capitalist kind of thing is bad. Right. Okay? That's why they've been getting rid of Jack Ma and all these other big billionaires. You've seen it. It's been yeah. happening like crazy. They're shutting this all down right. now. They don't want this kind of right. rampant capitalism happening in China anymore because they cannot control it. Correct. And they don't want it because they want this whole communist... All their rhetoric is coming just, back. It's, it's, not, it's not really that they want real functioning communism. It's no. they want the power structure back that came from communist leadership. Yes. Yes. So don't ever think that China is actually pushing for social benefits. Sure. What they're trying to do is actually just take away power from people that have more power than them. Correct. Right. So they've got that one area. They First of all, they don't want to be seen as backing this capitalist mess right. and bailing them out. Okay, that's one thing they don't want to do. Number two, they don't want to signal to all the other real estate companies, which, by the way, are also all in massive debt. Correct. All of the Chinese real yes. estate companies... This is not an isolated they, incident. They operate in the exact same way. Right. While Evergrande's got $300 billion in debt, others all have about 250 270 190 yeah. You know, you can look at all the lists. All the other big players have massive amounts of debt because they Huge. all work on this stupid like investment cycle where yep. they take people's money for doing nothing, produce crappy, shoddy products, move on, take people's money, you know, and it's kind of like this weird situation... And it does finally like wear down to the point where they are owing more than they have, you know. As far and their assets are crap. Can't go forever. Of you, course, you have to understand that the, we've gone through yeah, these places. The assets are garbage. So you know, you think if you're a bank who's lent money to uh, this big company, right? And they're just like, oh no, we're going to run out of uh, you know money or whatever. You're like, okay, we'll just take your assets and sell them off. Well, you can't because they're garbage. They're so you take buildings falling down. First of all, the buildings don't exist sometimes. Sometimes, most yeah. of the time, with, with all the new stuff, obviously it hasn't. Broke, broken ground, broken ground yet yeah. but the apartments that do exist are now think about it being given as payments to yeah. people and they're being given at a steep uh, discount vaporware at yeah. that point so think about it you're going to be offered okay you're owed like let's say a million dollars yeah this company comes along and says we can't pay you a million dollars but we'll give you an apartment and you're like well i don't want an apartment they're like well we'll give you an apartment that's worth 1.5 million and then you're like okay i'll take it so what have you done? You've just taken the value You've of gone that back into down. that system. Yeah, You've and, taken yeah, the value yeah. down. You've devalued the property now right. by another 0.5 million. Because you fed back into yeah. the farce, into the by entire circle. Right. So now everyone else sees, oh, now that, that apartment's worth less than it was before. So it drives the pro property market down for everyone. It's a bad situation. Oh, it's very bad. You know what I mean? It's very bad. So that's the thing. The, the Chinese government doesn't want this to continue. So they know that if they bail out Evergrande, all the other companies are just going to continue to do this stupid thing. The cycle is going to continue because they'll always be like, well, when we get bankrupt, <clears throat> the, the government's just going to come bail us out. Right. And they don't want that. Here's <clears throat> us exploring a yeah, ghost you can town see in somebody's, China. Yeah. We've gone around to these places. <clears throat> We've seen what they are. A lot of them are derelict and completely made of shit. Yeah, no, they're just garbage. Tofu All, buildings, they're called. Yes, tofu. tofu buildings. Can we make a correction? Yes. Don't say tofu drag. We just keep say hearing tofu this buildings. phrase, tofu drag construction. I don't know where this broke. In Chinese, yeah. it's tofu lo, which yeah. means tofu building. You don't yes. say drag. What is this yeah. drag shit? I don't know what this tofu drag is. Tofu is already wobbly. Yeah. You don't need to make it drag. No, you don't need to it's make it drag. tofu drags. building. Like when it falls down, you can call it tofu drag. Sure. Drags. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> back to the whole thing. So this, this is where we have to be very clear to everyone. If China doesn't bail out Evergrande, okay, if the Chinese government doesn't bail out Evergrande, it's going to have very far-reaching consequences to Chinese, the Chinese economy, okay? We're going to see real estate prices kind of tumble all around. Mm -hmm. We're going to see panic. We're going to see people just losing all trust in the government. We're going to see a mass, mass hysteria, basically. Why can't this happen? Well, that's why it can't happen, okay? Well, I mean, you're, are you saying that that's going to happen? I'm saying if... Yeah, if the government doesn't bail out Evergrande, right. it's going to screw everything up. I think both you and I will agree that that is not going to happen. No, it's not. And, and that's, it, yeah. This is what separates us again. Yeah. And again, not to toot our own horn, but there are so many freaking channels and news that goes all the way into darkness. Yeah, and they're like, oh, it collapsed. It's not. It's destroyed. We, it, like everyone keeps asking us, and I think they always they assume that we think this is when is the CCP going to collapse? No Never. Ones. It's and not going neither to. is the Chinese economy. And neither gonna, is the yeah, Chinese I'm economy. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. What China's 
definitely, what the Chinese government is definitely going to do is because this is how it works. There is um, debt that's owed domestically, mm. obviously, within China, and mm. then there's foreign debt. And the foreign debt is obviously from foreign banks and foreign uh, investors that have invested in Evergrande. Right. Okay. Right. Whether it be through your investment manager, whether it be an actual bank that's investing, whatever. Right. There's a lot of um, foreign investment. So yes. I think what's going to happen is well, they've already stated that they're going. They've stated they're going to pay back. Okay. Yeah. They're going to pay back the. Um, uh, investors. That's what they've said. Of course, that's what they're going to say because everyone's knocking down their doors demanding the money back. They're like, no, we'll pay everyone back, but they're going to pay the foreign investors back last. Yes. Okay. From what I've heard, and that makes sense because in China they don't really give a crap about the the outside world. You know, what happens in China is more important. So I think what's going to happen here is uh, they're going to not care about the outside investment. They're probably going to stiff them and not pay them. Tell them to go take a hike. Yeah. If they do pay them, it'll be way down the line. Okay? Yes. When it comes to paying back the debts within China, the Chinese government, like I said, has they can't publicly go ahead and say we're bailing you out. Mm -hmm. Okay? But what they can do is they can lean on the banks. And this is what they always do because the, the banks have to listen to what the government says. They mm. belong to the government. Mm. The government controls them. So what they're probably going to do is force the banks to extend the loans OK, not to come in and try to grab the money back now and default and cause bankruptcy. I think they're going to make them extend the loans for Evergrande and give them a long time to pay them off, maybe even pay the loans off for them, you know, and it'll be the banks doing it, not the government. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. And right. that way they can continue, because I think what they want is they want Evergrande to have enough money to complete the jobs that they've already got in, in you know, on right. the go, yeah. so they can sell them and get money and at least kind of continue the cycle of cash flow that makes sense yeah. so i'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen in this situation is that the the state-run banks are going to bail evergrande out by extending loans and maybe slyly paying off their debts for them but the chinese government is never ever going to admit that they've bailed them out correct you know what i mean yeah absolutely so that's why i think we're not going to see a collapse because the chinese government cannot afford a collapse it would really just throw china into chaos yeah, and again, the CCP is the whole the whole way they operate is based basically how much stability can we give to the the populace mm. to allow us to continue in the background doing whatever the hell we want to do. Exactly, and I would be as corrupt and shitty as we can. How many buttons can we push and things can take away from them and hurt their lives without them mm. rising up against us? Now you know what there's a the the Chinese government put out a dog whistle by the way. <whistles> yeah. <laughs> Is they, it like CPC when people say CPC? Well, Just daily reminder: if you see CPC instead of CCP, that is a dog whistle for a commie sympathizer. Yeah, it, is. it absolutely is. Sorry, let me get us back to this. Um, I, I read in in one of these big, um, you know, news outlets, Wall Street Journal or something, that uh, the Chinese government has told local smaller governments around the country to brace for impact if, yes. if things go wrong with this Evergrande thing, right? Correct. So, this to me is a very clear message from the Chinese government, the government to all the other um, real estate companies that, hey, we're not bailing out Evergrande, so you better get your ducks in a row. Right. Because why else would they say something like that? There's no reason for them to go out and say that because, you know, the, the Chinese central government is the government. It controls all the smaller parts. You Correct. Know, they don't need to go out and say brace for this, et cetera, et cetera, because it's their own government they just it's them they just need to tell them hey you know look something's going to be happening here this is what we're yeah. doing they don't need to like make this big announcement no. hey you better brace no this no. is just a message to the real estate companies yes. the chinese government is going to bail out and they can because they can get the banks to print money yeah. they can they, they can do just, it all the time that's the thing about a communist country there are no checks and balances no there's no rule of law checks and balances you yeah. when the central government says do something you do it yeah there's no like we operate independently of the So of the government. what they're going to do is tell the banks, pay off the debts or extend the loans and print money if you have to, do whatever you do, just to kind of finish this off. It's not a good situation, but that's what's going to happen. So honestly, again, you can't take our word completely for it. This is just speculation based on uh, our This experience. is what I think is yeah. good. I agree yeah. with you. Speculation based on, we're not financial experts, but... The Chinese government has too much to lose to allow Evergrande to just collapse. Yeah, I think there's a bizarre fantasy that some people have that this, they want to see some massive, crazy tornado of destruction. It's not going to mm -hmm. happen. No. The, if the CCP does one thing right, I'll tell you what, it's 
the to give the facade of stability and yes. and and correctness. And you know how that works? When people start to protest and they start to make noise about something because they're dissatisfied, they disappear them. Correct. They silence them. Yeah. And that's the thing. Imagine if you had like the BLM protests here in the States. Uh -huh. Imagine if the first group of people that went out, you know, Black Lives Matter, and they were all arrested and taken away. And then gone. And then anyone else who came out to say it was just... The, as, all, the cops are already ready. Imagine people on Facebook, yeah. they're like, let's organize a protest. And everyone that had replied <laughs> to that... Knock, knock, you're out. Yeah, before they can even go... Yeah had knocks on their doors and were taken away. Yep. And you'll you never would, see that person again. There would again. never have been a Black Lives Matter movement no. because it would have been destroyed before it even started. From the get-go. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they do. That's what they do with these like real estate protests. You saw they bust you them away. You won't see a whole lot of footage after this clip. No. <laughs> that's they the last bust them away. They silence them. They placate them in one way or the other. You know, get them to sign things to say we're not going to cause trouble, etc. And the movement's dead. Yep. Okay? Yep. So they're very good at maintaining the stable society. Yeah. Thing. But it's... Through intimidation and coercion. Yeah, I, I use the word facade for a reason. Yeah. Not only is the economy built on pillars of sand, yeah. it makes it causes the government to, to have the necessity to be brutal, yeah. absolutely brutal, and very efficient yes. at, at doing that. If you want to get anything done in China, it is the most bureaucratic red tape nightmare that you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. So actually, it's not efficient. It actually yeah. pisses off everyone in the entire country, but there's no metric to compare it to for yeah. them. Yeah. Like going to the DMV, mm. you don't know how lucky you are yeah. in the U.S. compared. Do you Man. remember the DMV in China? Oh, my God. It yeah. is a freaking nightmare. Everyone is pushing each other out of the way. Sure. There is no, people will ignore you. They'll yeah. tell you it's impossible. They'll send you home. Yeah. It is an absolute nightmare. But guess what? The government, the exact same government that gives you a nightmare at the DMV or whatever you're trying to do, yeah. get a house registration, and tries to make your life a living hell, is the exact same government that within five minutes knows exactly where you are, can come find you, can come stop you and shut you down and all the generations of your family can sure. disappear. Yeah. Because it's a highly efficient system at making sure that itself stays in power mm -hmm. and nothing else. Yeah. And nothing else. That's the thing. Most people don't realize it and they can live a fairly happy life until something happens. Right. You know, until you, you are about to lose money. Okay. Your huge investment. You think everything's cool because everything seems stable and you think, oh, China's so powerful. Look how we keep rising up and look how rich we are. Then you invest in this Evergrande thing. Yes. And then you find out, hang on a second, all my money's going to get lost. And then you're like, no, screw this. More power to them now, because like, how would you know yeah. in China? How would you know that there's a different, better system out there? No, right? no, but you wouldn't. But that's the whole point yeah. is when it when comes it happens, down to you, then you realize what you're dealing with and how bad it is. A lot of is. the dissidents that reach out to us, they t they're, they're, they're very good people. Yeah. You know, they, t they turn out good. You know, they, they see the truth. Sure. But um, a lot of the, the what's it called, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back for their situation is that they lose a ton of money. A yeah. lot of times they'll reach out and they lost a ton of money or someone they know, you know, was affected directly by this and it's like blinding slap in the face. Yeah. Holy shit, actually what people were saying about this government is true. Because yeah. until it happens to you, you're not sure. No, exactly. Right. You just think everything's cool. I wanted to make a, not a correction, and yeah. I wanted to bring up the tofu dreg thing, okay. the language mm -hmm. correction. So in Chinese, it, it was tofu da gong chang, which is mm -hmm. like uh, the tofu dreg constructions. What happened? happen is and i can always see this happen it's kind of right. like mama hoo hoo right there's this phrase called mama hoo hoo horse horse, Chinese, tiger, horse, tiger. horse tiger tire which means okay you know where that's from what well there's a an emperor right mm -hmm. it's always some emperor and uh he drew a painting and it was just like terrible and i might be i'm paraphrasing here so anyway he drew this uh picture and it was really really terrible and he asked one of his advisors like what 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 do you think of this animal? What is this animal type thing? And the advisor just didn't want to, you know, upset him. So he said, horse, horse, tiger, tiger. Uh, you know, it's like it's so a horse so and so, it's yeah. a tiger, you know? So it just means, mama hoo hoo just means like, eh, okay. My, you know? my point is, great, thank, you. Okay. And thank you for that. Yeah. That's actually a really nice You look it up, you'll get, the, you'll get the proper story, but it's something along those lines. Yeah, so my point is, a lot of foreigners will learn that phrase yeah. to say something is just okay. So if you say, how is that, uh, how, yeah. how is that tofu taste? And then they say, oh, mama hoo hoo, it's just okay. Yeah. Most people don't, Chinese people don't say that. That's a very foreigner word. Sure. They say yi ban ban. That means yeah. like it's just normal. Yeah. 
but you'll learn in Chinese class, like especially if foreigners are teaching, like, Amer- yeah. like you go to an American Chinese school, they'll be like, they say so so is mama hoo hoo, right? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, in yeah. like the first like one of Chinese one hundred one lesson. It's yeah. one of those words that gets propagated because like it p- gets popularized amongst non Chinese yeah. speakers. Sure. In tofu dregs, I'm seeing it's coming from Zhu Rongji, which is the former premier of the People's Republic of China back in the early two thousands. Yeah. He went to a dam in Jiujiang City in Jiangsu Province, and he described the dam as being poorly constructed. He said, uh, tofu jia, which is like tofu dregs. Sure. And I think someone probably got that official statement, like a different YouTube channel or one of these things, and translated it directly and started running with that. But if yeah. you talk colloquially with Chinese people, yeah, they, just they say, say tofu lao. It's tofu just lao, a Chinese. Yeah. So my tofu point tofu. is, it's not, it's not wrong. It's just one of those things that bothers, if you speak Chinese, it kind sure. of bothers you sure. a little bit. Anyway, gotcha. yeah. Anyway, cool. So at the end of the day, I just want everyone to not panic. Um, people that are worried that this is going to be a massive economic collapse, the same as the 2008 um, you know, problem that uh, happened in America, mm-hmm. which kind of whatever you call that. What was it called again? The recession, economic recession, and it was really bad for everyone. The oh, the Lehman financial Brothers crisis. Lehman was, Brothers, yeah. yeah. The Lehman financial crisis. Financial crisis. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I just want everyone to know that it's not, a, not no, going no, no, to be no, a financial no, 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 crisis. No, no, no. It's waking a lot of people up in China, hopefully, because this has been very irresponsible, what's been going on with the real estate market there. It's been this incredibly irresponsible situation. Oh, yeah. No, it's a, it's a powder keg. Yeah. It is absolutely horrible, but this is not the final straw. No. Right. That's where our point is. This is definitely going to wake some people up, and hopefully it'll cool things down a little mm-hmm. bit uh, yeah. as far as it's concerned. For the sake of but Chinese people. The, the Chinese government will bail out Evergrande 100%. one way or the other. Oh, we think so. They definitely have to. Yeah. And they'll do it underhandedly so yes. that they don't, like, people don't realize it was the, the CCP. And they'll say, look, America bails, the American government bails out GM and all these companies. Like, we don't do such a thing. Yeah. You know, we rely on socialism, yeah. blah, blah. You'll see all this bullshit. Yeah. Exactly. But we want we w- don't want you to be disappointed. We're not going to be one of those channels that's going to tell you that everything is going to shit. Yeah. You know, we're not going to war and we're not the, the world's economy is not collapsing over Evergrande. Yeah. Anyway, we'll keep a tight eye on it. We'll let you guys know if we notice anything change, but just from our own personal um, you know, experiences, that's kind of where it stands. It's going to have an impact one way or the other. It yes. already has had an yes. impact on the Chinese economy. And you've seen the stocks. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Die. It's not it's not 2008 crazy. financial collapse no. though. But uh, uh, yeah, I think I think we're going to all come out of this at the end of the day kind of positive, to be honest. Yeah. Because it's going to hopefully start to correct this crazy situation. People have to wake up to how ridiculous it is in China. We've also been warning against investing in yes. China because it's such, again, such a powder keg. Yeah. And this could be one of those things because what I think is going to happen to foreign investors is they're going to get screwed over. Yes. They're going to get massively screwed over. In Remember, this. you're the lowest priority when it comes yeah. to paying yeah. uh, paying back investors if you're a they've foreign said investor. That. Yeah, they've <laughs> said it as much and we know that's how China works. Right. It's always foreigners last, Chinese first. So just For, pay that in mind. As Gil Yeish says, foreign investors will be compensated in Burke coins. In Everyone's Burke going coins. crazy about Burke, by the way. Oh, yeah? Uh, now it's Burke Mouse instead of Wu Mouse. <laughs> Burke Mouse. <laughs> that Burke guy, I want to slap him. We're, well, we're going to look at... Hey, you don't... In, in Minecraft. No, yeah, I mean... In I, Minecraft. I want to slap him metaphorically. In Minecraft. For drawing such terrible art. Correct. I just ruined my day mm. seeing that, you know? You would never slap him. No, I don't slap people in real life. Metaphorically, I told you. But actually, we want to. We got to look him up and see if he's that dude. Yeah, it would be quite the coincidence that he wrote a bunch of China books. Yeah, the exact same name. It'd be interesting (laughs) with a similar artwork on the cover. We'll see. Yeah, we'll find. Either way, terrible artwork. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Cool. Yeah, that's our main main part over. Let's hit a couple of super chats and then we'll move on to our next segment. We got some good stuff, so stay tuned. Oh yeah, don't Uh, worry, we're not over yet. Stay awesome, y'all. You're the definition of awesome. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. Emmanuel Turna. Turna. Uh, Emmanuel, nice to see you. Always been a very genu- generous donor in the past. Nice to see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Max Shimbashi, who has the crazier fans? This is now. This is a poll. If I ever did see one. Okay. Who has the crazier fans? The CCP or the ICP? Insane Clown Posse or the Communist Party of China? Definitely the CCP because they yeah, got more actually, of them. They've got more of them, way more. Of That's them. not a poll because if you mm-hmm. think about it, just just pure number space. Yeah, hey, right. look at this evil uncle in the background saying, "You cannot film here." Yeah, we have people that give us footage from China, which is cool. Yeah, it's all up to date, guys. You this know, is that's very cool. recent. This is the other day. Actually. Yeah, it's about three days ago. This footage was taken. Yeah. Um, just like to keep you guys up that to date. That evil uncle was like, "F off." Yeah, he's like this brave person kept filming. Yeah, one of our good mates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Case closed 93 uh, with your new compound. You guys turning into Tim, Tim Pool. Next you'll have chickens and Steve Bannon visiting. I can tell you all of those <laughs> no. things will not happen. No, 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 no. No. Act 193. Uh, don't forget about BlackRock and the other invested hedgies, like hedge mm. funds. Is yeah. that what Australians call it hedge funds? Everything. Can I ask Australia a question? Love you guys. Oh, and shout out to uh, our friend yeah, Dion. Uh, Dion yeah, Chapman. thank you. Thank you for all. He sent the... us. We've been enjoying uh, a little yeah. too much of those treats. Yeah, some amazing Australian delicacies like um, Tim Tams and one thing. This, this there's, there's this bar, this candy bar called it's called Crunchy. Yeah. Again, this actually ties into what I'm saying. Yeah. It was like the best candy bar I've ever had in my life. Yeah, but anyway, really awesome. why is everything with an E? It's like, I'm going to have a cigarette. I'm going to have a Siggy. Siggy, it's time for Brecky. Brecky, Hedgies, yeah. Crunchies. Stop with it. That yeah. makes me sick. Yeah, I don't know what the I-E is. I love you, Australia, but stop with the E's. You want a Bicky with your tea? Oh, don't say, instead of biscuit, Bicky? Yeah. Oh, it sounds like a child. Yeah, I think it's kind of, it's a little bit uh, in England is it? as well. Oh, okay. Bit, I think they took it to the extreme. Ugh. I think Australia It kind of makes, gives me the willies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Bilbo Baggins. Uh, big fan, Bilbo. <laughs> what nice. are the, what are your thoughts on China banning femboys? We did a whole video on that. Yeah, there's a whole Bilbo. episode. It was our two episodes ago. Yeah, it's go called look. China banned sissy boys. Yeah. A lot of my trans friends in the US have been sympathetic to the CCP saw this as a big wake up call and they should. Holy crap, if you're a trans person, China Any, should be your worst enemy. <laughs> I hate to say this, but for some reason, uh, a lot of people that are, you know, um, into anything that's social justice related, they seem to support China. Why? And I don't understand why, because China's the least friendly. I mean, maybe, I don't know, Al Qaeda or something's more. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. China's Developed one of the, government. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of the least friendly groups towards LGBTQ plus RTYs and uh, whoever else is on that spectrum. Feminists, they hate feminists. Yeah. Like, you have to understand that the Chinese, the CCP, is at the worst. So why are they always, like, supporting them? I don't get it. Yeah. Anyway, why? Does everyone's going, like, give me the tofu biddies instead of, like, tofu buildings? Yeah, yeah, changing biddies. all the E's. Yeah, that is a bit uh, annoying, that. <laughs> somebody said it gives him the Williams instead yeah, okay, of the, the Williams. I, yeah. <laughs> I did the E's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gives yeah. me the Williams. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. Uh, so anyway, first I came for the animated cat boys and I said nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of cat boys in uh, in China. Yeah. It's like a really big thing. They're gonna they're they're definitely banning that stuff. I mean, look, they're they're banning anything that's kind of Western and you know anything that's uh, I don't know Japanese South Korean influence. Oh, and just gay stuff thing. in general. Yeah. Anything yeah. gay is bad in China. Tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. You know all that kind of stuff. So you got to understand this is not the these are not the people to back if you're. Uh, any kind of social justice aligned community member, you have to understand that China hates that very much, the Chinese government, and they're very much against it. So please don't get your wires crossed. Yes. We'll return to Orc Monkey says, I always thought Kiwis were a kind of fruity bird. Um, <laughs> okay. The Can Opener podcast says, Much love from Canada. Thank you. Uh, what are your thoughts on China banning crypto for the eighth time? And that's a boo, si boo signal, boys. What does that mean? I don't know what the that's that's a boo signal B U. I don't know what that stands for. Binghamton University. <laughs> no. We we're going to talk about Binghamton University. But we'll put it in the next episode about what they said in response to oh, the, yeah, Confucius the Confucius Institute. Institute. Oh boy, as my hometown, I mm -hmm. have to say I have a little bit of a bone to pick with you. B U. We're going to be having a chat. But it's true, you know. Um, China's just made it illegal to do any transactions with cryptocurrency. Yeah, actually, I have that in our material. We can talk about it later. Yeah, okay, we it's, will. It's in the material. Okay, we'll talk about it. Uh, Norman Fair, I hope Tesla is paying attention to what Ningbo did to Samsung. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again... They're not, they're not though. They're yeah. not. Tesla's dumb for some reason. Elon Musk's like, it's okay, it's China. We'll just, you know, China's the next big thing. He said, kind of, without saying it directly, was like, I don't care if they steal our IP. Yeah. As long as the world gets electric vehicles. I mean, yeah, but it's not about stealing it's, IP, is no. it? It's just about actually just getting ripped off and all of your assets stolen and all your money stolen and and frozen it happens all the time anyway you know yeah we've said that warning plenty of times alexander hitala thank you very much mm -hmm. james cheers from canada do you think china will release it to michaels now that Meng wanzhou has made a deal with the u.s justice department justice department i think actually maybe it will happen but yeah we're gonna, let's hope it just happened the reason we're not bringing it up i actually saw someone they're like they were too scared to talk about the Meng thing no, no, why no, would no. we be too scared to talk about that we're going to talk about it when we actually know what happened. Absolutely. <laughs> let's let's wait. Just like we took a little while to talk about Evergrande. Yeah. 
Now, the Meng Wanzhou thing, we will talk about it for sure, don't oh, you Oh, for sure. Pro- probably in the next episode. Yeah. Depending on what happened. Click uh, click on Run says the C- CPC for life. <laughs> okay. Ooh, dog whistle. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Enter Sim. Thank you. Wolf93, yeah. first time super chatting. Keep up the good work. Do you think we'll ever find the origins of COVID? I think it'll take very long, but I think we're on the right track. Yeah. Bilbo Baggins came back with what political reforms would you like to see to prevent another Wuhan? Uh, should the WHO be reformed? Yes. I yes. think you should allow Taiwan in and reduce China's... We should stop allowing China to have influence, influence over yeah. any of these organizations over because d- China, yeah. they their entire form of government, the way China runs is it's all about face. Yes. Okay? Lies. And so lies. It's about lying. Yeah. Okay? And who, we cannot... Who can tell the best lie? Yeah. We cannot have a, com- a country's government who is proficient at lying to it is be a part their, of these. it's the how yeah. they operate yeah we can't have that because that's why people end up you know in trouble it's because they lied about the covid and yeah. that it wasn't human to human and Correct. all that and then that's why it's spread if you had a transparent government that was held to account that if they did lie people were actually like hang on a second you can't do that and there are repercussions but not china for some reason the Chinese government lies all the bloody time. Oh, we're not going to militarize those islands in the South China Sea. Guess what? Obama what administration goes, okay. Yeah, what have we got? Airstrips, we've got military bases, yeah. we've got yeah. missiles. We... Nobody's like, hang on a second, you lied. Pay a fine. They're just like, oh, it's just China. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and what now it's too hell? late and everyone's like, oh, crap. Yeah, so, yeah, China should not be a part. Until China changes its ways... It shouldn't be a part of these big organizations. You would need absolute political change. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, one... let's, are you going to do one more? Okay, one more. Oh, I just want to finish that question. Okay. Um, okay. And could international alliances help us in the future if there's another CCP, uh, CCP outbreak cover-up? I'm a big fan of international alliances. Yes. I think that's some a direction that we're going in very well right now. Agreed. Um, we should not be all trying to like... If we're standing up to an authoritarian, horrible, horrible tyrant of a government yeah. that's actually trying to influence uh, world politics... Yeah. We do need to be allied and, and stand up to that, that beast, really. Correct. To be honest. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to move on, and we're going to do... Keep the super chats coming. We'll come yeah, back. Yeah. We're, we're going to go to Wu Mao Corner, where we talk Sir about... Uh, milky. What? Stop. <laughs> so we talk about hate. But this time, it's kind of a funny one. This time, it's... Uh, it's usually it's, funny. Well, this is a reverse troll. We're actually... Uh, something we missed out right in the beginning we want to show you guys is... Uh, the biggest YouTuber of all had something to say. So, there's no Taiwan on this? Did fucking China make this list? Are you serious? <laughs> you know what? Where are they? Those fuckers. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> there's a reverse Wuma from PewDiePie. Uh, I w- you know what? This doesn't seem... <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't seem fair to put China and Norway in the same region. So, congratulations, <laughs> Norway. You're actually E tier. <laughs> China gets F tier on PewDiePie's tier list. I want to say F-tier thank you to PewDiePie for, sure. for actually shouting me out one time. One of his videos, fantastic. No. Always been a fan of PewDiePie. You don't have to like his material to know that he's usually been on the side of good. Yeah, I mean, I don't watch his stuff at all, but I do recognize he's the biggest YouTuber out there, and yep. he's got a massive following. And it's good for him to show awesome. a little bit of uh, he's, well, he was Taiwan banned support. from China, yeah, which was awesome. So he kind of yeah. joined our ranks on that front a while ago. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, cool. All right. So, uh, do we have anything else for Walmart Corner? I don't oh, we think do. so. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do? You, what is it? Again, I keep getting angry because you don't know, but then I realize it's not your fault because I didn't run you through any of this no, stuff. No, no, no. So, what are we looking at? Is it this this thing? Yes, that is Walmart Corner. Okay. Let's... No, that can be Worldview. Keep going. I think there might be something. Oh, but back, go back. Go back. Here. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Here we got our uh, surprise <laughs> Walmart Corner from Seamilk. What is it? So, <laughs> okay. This is so good. Okay. So, uh, there is a spy plane that went by China, as yeah. they do. It was a U.S. spy plane. Uh, they'll think that that's anything out of the ordinary. It's just what, what yeah, things Yeah, it do. didn't fly into their airspace a monitor. I should say it's a monitor. No, it was a yeah. monitoring plane. It's like an AWACS or something? It's or? a USF, USAF. Maybe you can look that up, what kind of plane, plane it is. Okay. You're a plane boy. Yeah, okay. I'll um, USAF RC-135S 13, has been spotted over the Yellow Sea, monitoring China three days in a row. As close as 26 newton, uh, nm uh, nautical miles off of the territorial sea baseline. What's more aggressive than its close-in surveillance is perhaps today's call sign, Junkie81, which is probably calling the PLA names. So <laughs> we actually had a think tank, it was a Chinese think tank, that got freaking pissed because they thought yeah. 
that the U.S. plane. What kind of plane is it? You can explain. It's just a Boeing seven thirty nine. Okay. What kind of plane oh, is, is that? Oh, is it? No, it's a Boeing RC-135. It's is it a remote reconnaissance control? aircraft. No, no. <laughs> okay. Of course not. <laughs> okay, it's so a RC. reconnaissance aircraft, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, this reconnaissance aircraft goes by China, 26, mm-hmm. what is it, 26 nautical miles off, and its call sign is Junkie 81, right? Probably yeah. like, I'm a chip junkie, I'm a heroin <laughs> junkie, I'm a blah, 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 right? Yeah. So this think tank goes, excuse me <laughs> yeah you flying this plane near china calling it junky as a call sign is you saying that the pla is junk the yeah. chinese military yeah. is just junky it's and it reminded me of pig's peak oh yes yeah. uh, which we can tell that story yeah. real quick okay so we're i don't know if i should tell this one or you should tell this one it's i mean i, th- I think a very it, simple version okay a very simple version we're sitting horribly drunk having a great time at this outdoor restaurant type thing and this guy walks up, and he's like the most terribly dressed man that I've seen in a well, very long yeah. time. Okay. You know he was. It just doesn't matter. Okay, terribly <laughs> yeah, dressed. Yeah. And he's wearing, it's very typical what we call a Laoban outfit. Stained. It's like a, a pop-up collar, polo shirt, you know, just a polo shirt. Type. But it's, it's important to know that it's always neon colors and yes. shiny. It's quite yeah. shiny. Yeah. It's not like a nice polo shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So nice. He's wearing this like orange, effed up, terrible, like really yeah. bad polo Stains. shirt. Is his typical thing, and it was the Peak brand, P E A K. It's right? a Chinese brand. Yeah, yeah. And which is a well-known brand. So I was just in a in one of those moods, and I'm. That's why I don't like to drink that much anymore because I get into these moods. Yeah, sometimes. but you didn't do anything. No, I didn't. No. But I was just kind of being like facetious. So I said to him, "Oh, Peak, great brand." Yeah, that's the joke. Yeah. Was I said, your, I yeah, said yeah, to him like. Yeah. In Chinese, I'm like, ah, oh, peak, how pai zi, you know, peak. peak. Okay. There was no joke other than that. Next minute, he, this guy, so this guy disappears for a while. He comes back with his friend and they're angry. And he's like, <laughs> you must apologize. I'm like, what are you talking about? He thought I called him a pig. Yeah. Because peak, you know, and that's like a mispronunciation. Yeah, in Chinese, in Chinese, the letter say, I, they you always are a peak. It's an E sound. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've heard people say, yeah. that, you know, you're a peak. You're yeah. a peak. And yeah. it's like, no, it's pig. Yeah, yeah, but it was peak, P-E-A-K. Yeah, so you're I was just like, reading it, sure. And, and I was trying to explain to him in Chinese, you know, and I even pulled out my phone yeah. and like to show him a dictionary, like peak means, you know, the, the top. The highest, the, you're, you're, you're like, like you're, the you're, you're, the, you're the best. Yeah, I was like, you're the best. That's what I was saying. You are the best. I just like your brand is the best. And, yeah. But he wouldn't buy it. Oh, He's I, like, I had to push <laughs> him and his friends off you. You were laughing your ass off. And remember, like, it got to this point where more and more people just crowds like from. And the guy's like, you must apologize. And I was like, like, just apologize, so, Winston. So I went up to him like, yeah, You know, yeah, I was like, like, oh, like, like so sorry. sorry. <laughs> and then he got all pissed He off was like, too. And I was like, stop. Like, <laughs> and his friend was like, it's okay, his it's okay. He's apologized. Yeah. He's apologized. Yeah. apologized. Let's get out of here. Anyway, yeah. the point <laughs> is, this reminds me of that where it's yeah. a complete misunderstanding. Yeah, it is. Because I, I junkie mean, means you're really into something. You're addicted to something, right? Yeah, yeah. And play the next clip. It also reminds me of this. When we've gotten in trouble in the past, Mm -hmm. when we talk about Chinese junks. Yes. Which, as you guys know, the the, the old style of Chinese boat is called a junk. It's called a junk. Not because it's bad. That's the name. It's the name of it. So what you call it? <laughs> we brought that up in the past, where we said, "Yeah, that that is a Chinese junk." Which right in Hong Kong. Sorry, yeah. Which we filmed. Yeah, yeah we filmed this in Hong Kong. That's so Chinese junk. We like and we like to see them in the bay. So we'd film them and we'd show, "Hey, look at this cool footage of this Chinese junk." Yeah. And we would get lambasted from yeah, Wu people Mao. People like, "Why would you call like how, how dare, dare you? you call our Chinese ships junk?" And again, it's exactly the same thing. Three stories here. They all line yeah. up. Yeah, they do. It's this stupid, thin-skinned. Everything's got to be about you. The yeah. Wumao, everything's got to be about you this, and bullying you. This peak nonsense is yeah. just this ridiculous. Pig, we, we call it Pig's Peak. The yeah, story. we call it Pig's Peak now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, what a load of rubbish that was. Yeah. And it was almost a massive fight Oh, that was a bad nothing. one. That was a bad one. Just over nothing. Over nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I was telling you. That means you're the best. You're the pinnacle. You were being nice at that point, but he didn't want to no, hear No, he didn't anything. want to hear that. He no. was convinced you called him a pig because he yeah. was fat as fuck. <laughs> he was. He was fat. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Imagine this. Uh, <laughs> it did kind of sound like pig. You know, I will say this. Yeah. In almost every situation, mm-hmm. Winston never is a belligerent. He's never a belligerent person to go. You don't go after strangers. No, 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 that, no, that was never. It was kind of an inside joke because we're like, yeah. we, we always make fun of those shirts. Because yeah. actually, it wasn't against the guy. 
yeah. to your benefit. Yeah. It was because my mother-in-law gave me a bunch of those peak shirts not yes. that long ago. And we were actually wearing we were them wearing in the them. shop. Yeah, that's true. So we were pointing it out. And actually, that's where the discussion started. It's like, this that shitty shirts that my mother-in-law bought us. Yeah, but we exactly. kept wearing these stupid peak shirts. Yeah, and so, yeah, right. that's where it, it started. Anyway, yeah. yeah, that was an interesting story. I guess it's time for us to take a... I did want to say that oh, I'm can... usually the guy that has to be like, can you fucking stop? <laughs> yeah, yes, it's true. It is true. It is true. We've been through a lot of that nonsense in the past, I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah, good story, though. Yeah. Cool. So I guess we'll take a couple Super Chats before we move on to yeah, World sure. View, eh? Jonathan K says, hey, guys. I recently became friends with a Chinese girl from Xi'an here in Florida who I introduced to your content, and now she loves it. That's oh, awesome. that's cool. That's cool. Have you been to Xi'an? Yes, we have. Yes. Also, can you say hi, Runan? Oh, that's hi, Runan. Hi, Runan. How you doing? Appreciate. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just burped. Yeah. Appreciate you uh, watching our content. Yeah. Ni hao. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Xi'an is a is a very interesting place. Watch you Xi'an. Yeah. And I like. Runan, you're a bit strong, but the the cai is very good. Exactly. That's the best part about Xi'an, to to be honest, is the food. Rojia mo. It's like. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, the yang rou pao mo. They've yeah, got, pao mo. That's so one of my. Good. That's one of my favorite foods. Yeah. Yang rou pao mo is what I most like about Chinese food. Yeah, it is. Um, it's really amazing. So if you ever go to Xi'an, go on Muslim Street. It's touristy as all hell. But go on Muslim Street and eat the food there. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, uh, what's our next question? Uh, Jonathan Case. Oh, sorry. Uh, year, Griffin Year Out says, I just put my two weeks because I got a higher paying job. Congratulations. Wow. Now that I'm a billionaire, here's $10 instead of five. Thank you hey, so much, thanks, mate. Appreciate Seriously that. appreciate your Check generosity. Out, Thank you. Uh, Intersim, message retracted. Ooh, oh, it must Sounds have been like interesting. Spicy. I wish I could see. Yeah, interesting. You hide, what are you hiding from us, huh? Yeah. Uh, Panama Chong says, "Dang, didn't hear you hear Wu Mao's got a raise? Apparently, now they're getting paid eighty cents now. I I thought they got a, di- a discount. Yeah, like I thought they got their wages you, you cut. cut. Yeah, twenty five cents now. Shout out to them for the well deserved raise. Mm. Simon M, have you heard about the six hundred and fifty pages of French report about China's strategies of infiltration and subversion? Truly uplifting. Uh, mm. Too bad it's not translated. Actually, that it, it was translated. We. We saw that. It was a huge report. Well, mm. this the summary was translated. Yeah, summary was translated. No, it was very yeah. good. It was mm-hmm. very good. Very happy. It's getting upvoted all over the place. It's good. Uh, Greg R. Winston says, kiwi fruit, to be certain, no one is confused between a reference to his head or the fruit. Well, Winston is not from New Zealand. No. Um, I think you may be confused. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. A lot of people do think you're from New Zealand for some reason. It's just the Because they don't accent. know South Africa. Yeah, it's just the accent. Yeah. They either say Australia or New Zealand. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my I'm not saying Bicky though, am I? And Bricky no, and I gotta say you're much less tall. You're much more tolerable than a Bicky and a Bricky and all <laughs> that crap. Nice. Yeah, uh, Massage. This is my first super chat. Greetings from a pole living in the UK. You're doing an awesome job. I'm binge watching your podcast for a few days already. That's awesome. Keep Fantastic. it up. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us live. Appreciate it. Yeah. Return to Orc Monkey. Got to be careful with those frozen kiwi particles, man. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's true. Frozen seafood particle reference. Yep. Nice. Okay. Cool. I like it. Let's hit our worldview, shall sure, we? Sure, sure. Okay. So, guys, worldview is where we talk about what's happening in the world outside of China, but usually to do with China. Definitely and kind today. Of, kind of like what's new, but the same. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like what's new, but the same. Yeah. So what do we got over here? We got a, a real live Bitcoin. You know, what's funny is I every time I look for a visual representation representation of Bitcoin, it's always this thing because you, you can't show a Bitcoin. Mm. Isn't that interesting? I, a subscriber who came to visit me in uh, Shenzhen once actually bought, gave you one. Yeah, gave me one huh? of these. Not a real Bitcoin. I know. You know, that would have been I really it, amazing. Yeah. But gave like me one of these souvenir. 3D printed type ones. Yeah. It's really cool. That is cool. Yeah. What if there was an actual Bitcoin inside like a QR code? It's like... That'd be... Whoop. Yeah, then I'd be rich. Do you still have it? No. Oh, I mean, I, I gave it to Sasha, so I don't know what she did with it. Yeah. She's rich now. Um, anyway, point mm-hmm. is, China banned cryptocurrency. They've done this in the past. Well, they've threatened it in the past. Yeah. They've threatened like large... Or no, they've banned large money transfers through Bitcoin before. The reason I knew that it was all bullshit was because I freaking knew people, like mm-hmm. elderly people in China that were still using Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, so it, they never really worked. That's how what? I got my savings out of China with yeah. some Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Now, the funny thing is, is that um, despite all of that happening, there were uh, alerts and, and spotlights on people, especially government officials mm-hmm. that were using it. Yeah. So that was really like a worry for them. But now it's like a... It's a 
blanket ban on yeah. cryptocurrency, except for their own internal ones like Huobi and things like that. Sure. Um, they're going to have the centralized yeah, one, going which to completely defeats the UN purpose. Whatever. Yeah. Defeats the purpose of what an anonymous cryptocurrency is. Like, do you like the fact that you can move around money completely anonymously through the crypto network? Well, we got the perfect solution for you. We have it tied to your national ID <laughs> and photo and yeah. everything. Yeah. But anyway, um, long story short, they banned it. It's going to have huge implications in the market. Um, it's definitely this, already look. There's down. been a lot of issues with Bitcoin in China. Number one, Bitcoin mining, mining farms. Yes. Okay. They've been operating, you know, very badly and costing China a lot of money because what happens is local governments in more rural areas, they get like a subsidy from the government for electricity right. because it's a rural developing area. Right. But then what they do, those local governments, they sell that electricity to Bitcoin mining yeah. operations. Yeah. So all the money that's spent to generate all this electricity is given away for free, basically, by the government to these, you know, for Correct. a bribe. So it's costing the Chinese government a lot of Huge money, money, all these stupid Bitcoin farms everywhere, for instance. Yeah. There's all sorts of nonsense going on, but Bitcoin has been an enemy of the CCP for a very long time. Corrupt officials getting their money out of the country, that kind of thing. So they're always trying to, like, get rid of it. Yeah. So now they made it illegal to do uh, transactions. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's, <clears throat> a lot of people are speculating uh, mm -hmm. what an ADV coin would be. And a lot of people are, are just saying it's either Burke coin, which I think no way. No. We would not trade in Burke coin. No. If we had a shit coin, it definitely wouldn't be. And some people said peak coin. <laughs> peak coin. I like peak coin. <laughs> uh, peak. It's like the top. It's the yeah, best. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's way hard. It's way hard. It's way hard. It's way hard. It's a peak. This is a peak B. It'd be peak B. It's a peak. It's a peak. <laughs> you know yeah, that was not a fun <laughs> no. fun situation no. <laughs> anyway uh, Schissel says uh, here in Germany no one talks about the topics you're covering here mm. on your personal channels do you think it will change or get worse I think it's definitely opening up mm. I'll tell you what the fact that we had a sponsor today and we're not talking about it too much but yeah. it, it's we've reached out to companies and the companies have reached out to us to say we don't mind that you criticize the CCP. That was unheard of yeah. before. There's a reason. We got dropped. There's a reason you don't see like you know brought to you by Dollar Shave Club or some crap on our uh, podcasts, right? There's a reason for that, and that's because no company wants to deal and with guess us. Guess what? I did deal with Dollar Shave Club, and they dropped me because I was too critical of the Chinese government. Yeah. And I can't say that they didn't give me that in a statement. Yeah. But I can tell you that in the email that when I got dropped, that oh, it's just not a good fit anymore. Yeah. I know it's going. No, look, on. it's pretty straightforward. Big companies all want a piece of the Chinese market, yes. and they're afraid. And so it's difficult to get sponsors. And that's why it's the, the fact that you've got people that are willing to sponsor our podcast, like that game. Yeah, you know? like that was the first time someone was willing to sponsor our podcast. It's great. Which was huge. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. All and right. So are we going to hit our Q&A? No, we got more. Oh, we got more. We got more. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. We are in well, Worldview. Well, okay. Oh, I just wanted to play the Lithuanian National Anthem oh. because... Lithuania, yet again, with the win, oh, what did they, they do are time? just digging deep against the CCP thing. Okay. So what happened is they found out that um, in Xiaomi phones and Huawei phones, right? Yes. That, And so these, these are around the world. That of course. Lithuania had the balls to say something about it. They found that um, 449 terms that were censored by the Xiaomi phone systems apps Oh. including the default internet browser. These are not domestic phones. So you get press statements all the time from Huawei, and this is Huawei's favorite thing as well right. as Xiaomi, is, okay, yeah, we do all this bad shit and censor stuff, and we spy on everyone in China. Yeah, but not outside. But, but not a, if you buy a phone from Xiaomi or Huawei, none of that stuff pertains. Yeah. Bullshit. So yeah. Lithuania, the government said, if you have a Chinese phone currently in, in Lithuania, please dispose of it right Just away. Just throw it away. Throw it away right away. Mm -hmm. Because... It highlighted more than 449 terms that could be censored, including the de default browser, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, this is what um, they said. Xiaomi devices do not censor communications from its users, a spokeswoman told the BBC. Mm -hmm. Xiaomi has never and will never restrict or block any personal behaviors of smartphone users, such as searching, calling, web browsing, or use of third-party communication so software. However, the research found that the Xiaomi device was transferring encrypted phone usage data to a server in Singapore. Great. which was a lie, which is they said they didn't do. Yep. This is important not only to Lithuania, but to countries all uh, all around the world, really, that use Xiaomi equipment. So 
the uh, uh, official Huawei, so for the Huawei side of things, the application score, the app gallery, directs users to third-party e-stores, some of which applications have been uh, assessed by antivirus programs as malicious and infected with viruses. Right. So you have, so this is the Lithuanian Ministry of Defense, the National Cybersecurity Center. You have Xiaomi, which is blocking mm -hmm. search terms in Lithuania for Tibet, yeah. Tiananmen Square, all this kind of stuff. And then you have Huawei that's actually putting people to go get their data stolen, yes. sending them and directing them. So the Lithuanian government was like, go fuck yourself. Sure. <laughs> throw, sure. throw this shit away. Yeah. This is bad. So I just wanted to play the Lithuanian. Okay, let's play it in the background there. And also, I have the English lyrics up here. Oh, I better get started. So we can let's land of worthy heroes, and I agree. Yeah. Don't mind if we talk over this. Yeah. You are worthy heroes. May your sons draw strength and vigor. Imagine a 2 million populace standing up to 1.4 billion. Yeah, like, like I've said before, it's Lithuanian courage. Yes, it is. We Lithuanian all need courage. a little bit of Lithuanian courage. We do. May your children always proudly. I shouldn't say 1.4 billion people. I should say 90 billion CCP yeah, members. Sure. 90 million CCP Choose members. Choose the paths of virtue. Mm -hmm. May they work towards your game. How apt is this? How apt are these lyrics? Very good. And that of all mankind. It's very short, don't worry. Yeah. May the sun of, of this land. land. Yeah, we can read it for the people listening. Yeah. Scatter, Scatter all, all the gloom and dark. dark. With, With truth, truth and, and light. light. I like it. What mm -hmm. a good anthem. Yeah. Guiding, Guiding our steps, steps forever. forever. We're doing this in unison. This yeah, that's nice. how it goes. May our May love, love for Lithuania. Lithuania. And the free world, might I add. Yes, yes. Keep, Keep burning, burning on in our hearts. In our hearts. Yeah. We got some hype for Lithuania. In Lithuania's dear, dear name. name. What a badass. We shall stand together. So, yeah. We shall, Lithuania. You yes. are leading the world in this, in a lot of this. Stand together with Lithuania against the CCP. Yeah, fantastic. Congratulations, Lithuania. We love you. You are now our new favorite country. Used to be Estonia. You haven't been replaced, Estonia? Lithuania's kind of been carrying the Baltics, though. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So we're going to hit our... Uh, Q&A. Q&A, yes. Okay, guys, Q&A time where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Let's get through this. This is actually my favorite part of the show where we can actually, um, you know, have Me a conversation. Too. Let's do it. <laughs> Frizz hair woman was checking out the back of your head there. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Adam Yuri says, have you been keeping up with the AUKUS news? We have. We certainly have. Oh, yes. Uh, do you think that you will be a reliable ally in deterring China's aggression towards Taiwan and the South China Sea? I think yes, and I also think there's no choice. Of course. Have to we, do we, it. We gotta. Yeah. This is our last chance, guys. I'm sure you also. Well, I'm I'm releasing a video tomorrow. My my video on my channel. You'll see a little bit about what's going on with that stuff. Cool. Yeah. At uh, H. Preciado says, are there levels to show how Chinese treat Latinos, like from the U.S. versus Mexico versus Brazil? Does it mainly have to do skin color, yes. or do they categorize them? It's all skin oh, it's all color. Skin it doesn't color. matter what country you're from. Um, when I was in the Shenzhen University, I had uh, you know different uh, you know classmates yeah. from all over, so Mexico, Brazil, et cetera, et cetera. And it was all about the skin color. The darker the skin, yep. the worse they were treated. Yep. And that's just the way it is. And I'm sorry to say that's how Chinese society that's, is. That's why you can have a, mm. a person from rural Russia or Ukraine or something, and no no, no shade, yeah. but they can go fill a position of a native English teacher over a native-speaking black person. Yes. So the reason is, is because they'd rather have a white person that speaks shit English yeah. than a black person, a black that person that speaks, that speaks great fluent English, English yeah. which is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Um, Shoot, anyway. Shoot Kendoji says, funny that the CCP advocates burning landlords when they literally own all the land in China. That's very true. Reverse Uno yeah, card. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Luminescent. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering when, uh, yeah, Tim Pool and ADV China, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. One of these days. Sorry, one of these Beanies days. are in the mail. Beanies. When our beanies arrive, yeah. then you'll see it happen. Mm -hmm. John Sheena says, USA gain of function funded and China leaked virus. Cool. Okay. Thanks, John. John Sheena is everywhere. Yeah. He's on like every video, not just ours. He's yeah. all over YouTube. Well, I mean, have you seen like now when he comes out of his WWE <laughs> thing, it plays like a Chinese song and stuff? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, wait, what are you like, saying about? Yeah, when he comes out, you know when they go out of WWE? Oh, I thought you were like, joking. No. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah. I'll find can you pull that up? Find that clip I just want to have a little look. Yeah, for sure. And then they can, viewers can, we can tell them what to look up. Yeah. Um, Kony Tsung says, you guys moved east? Yes, we did. I, I'm just about to move back to California or tra trading places then. Mm -hmm. Is it because of the cost of living there? Um, a little bit. Not so much. It's just uh, it's the nature of the beast. We have a lot of people that we know out east. So mm -hmm. it's kind of 
it's kind of like coming home for me <laughs> in a way. I mean, all my contacts and connections are here. So yeah, it's life. I'm talking about us moving it to the East Coast. Yes. Sorry, I can't find the clip. I'll we show traded you later. places with this guy, Coney. Okay. Um, uh, you couldn't find it, so it doesn't exist. No, it does. I'll show it to you later. I just got to look it up. It's I am very specific. I am currently looking at your screen that says John Cena raps in Mandarin. <laughs> and that might be something we have to show in the next episode. We might. We might have just, to. Yeah, I vet it and make sure it's... I'll make uh, sure it's actually real. Ross Wolf, you've said Hitler is seen as a good example as a strong leader by the CCP. Yes. Yes, yes he is. In his book, why, is his book widely read in China as it is in the Middle East? Uh, nah, no. No. No, not at all. It's kind of like, we love Hitler. That's what they Without say. Without actually even knowing. We love Hitler because he's so strong, leader. That's yeah. what you'll, you'll hear in China often. I'm just going to listen yeah, to this Yeah, please, please. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. It's pretty cringe. Oh, God. I can't I'm do it. it. We have to show this next time because it won't yeah. be copywritten because there's yeah, no music. Yeah, yeah, we'll show it next Woo! time. Woo! Started sweating. All right, yeah, that is John bad. Cena freestyling in Mandarin. It's pretty awful. Um, I'm, his Mandarin's getting better. Oh, definitely. It's it's it's, it's very foreign accented, mm-hmm. but it's, it's oh, come on, man. That's his bread and butter. He better get better at Mandarin. You know? Yeah, this is job now, isn't it? It's kind of if Lord Hoho couldn't speak German. Yeah, you know I mean, true. Anyway, uh, I am dumb, but I am not dumb. Uh, mm-hmm. The COVID positive kiwi fruit is punishment. Just recently, Zespri shareholders and growers voted against the trial of licensing Sun Gold to Chinese yes, growers. Yes, and that's I was reading about that. That that uh, that's correct because mm-hmm. I told you there were those counterfeit groves that were growing in Sichuan, right? So basically, the proposal was, well, why don't we just license them since they're there already? Let's try to license them, and they're like, why must we reward them for stealing our fruit? Right. You know what I mean? Correct. So that's probably correct. So like, oh, it's got COVID. <laughs> It is. So it is what I predicted. Yeah, so they just want to force them out the market so they can sell their local counterfeit knockoff kiwi fruit. Right. Uh, Koala 12. Bet you it doesn't t- taste the same because it's all about the soil and the. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll it's be top be, of the wall. It'll be, it'll be almost the yeah. same. But I bet you it's, you know, probably got battery acid in it or something from the ground. <laughs> just saying. You know, yes, the, um, you, you do have to understand. And I'm, I know that sounds really terrible for me to say, but uh, 70 percent of arable land in China is contaminated. 70 percent. Correct. So if you Actually, find that was that's an old. Estimate. That's a, and that's an old yeah. statistic. It's probably more now. 70 percent of gr- over 70 percent of groundwater is contaminated. Yes. Yeah. So that's you have rough. to understand that, like when you're growing something there, oh, it's yeah. going to take on the characteristics of the soil. Keep in mind, like a lot of people that we know, actually, most of the people that we know do have visible I should say, not visible to you with the human eye, but at least with x-rays, visible uh, health problems because of the stuff that they grew up eating. Mm, It's bad. It's really bad. It is. It's pretty bad. Uh, Mm -hmm. This Shining Red Star book is literally like the one seen in Squirrel and Hedgehog. It shows how much cheese China is becoming like North Korea, correct? Squirrel and Hedgehog is the North Korean sanctioned cartoon. You've seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Durden, 3333. Do you think some of the Hong Kong police felt conflicted during the protests because yes. they have friends and family who are anti-CCP? Absolutely. You know, the thing is, like, uh, from my experience, the Hong Kong police have always been very fair and uh, professional it, it, leading up to these protests. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I've had to deal with them, which has not been often, it's not like I have to deal with the police a lot. But, like, for one, for instance, one night, me and my friend, um, we he lived pretty far. I'd lived in Yuen Long. So from downtown, like, Hong Kong Island, it's far, Right. So we had a night drinking and stuff, and we get a taxi to go home. So we get in the taxi, and we tell him, like, yeah, we want to go to Yuen Long. And he's like, no, I'm not going. Get out. He was really rude because he just didn't want to do the drive. So we're like, no, because by law, they have to take you, yeah. right? So it kind of escalated a little bit, and we're like, no, we, you, we're paying you. You know, you, you picked us up. We're supposed to take us. He's like, no, I'm not going. Get the hell out. It was a green so, taxi, right? No, yeah, it was the proper, yeah, yeah. It was the, the proper taxi to go out there, yeah. 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 No, 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 it was a red one. They can go to the new territories. Yeah. That was a red one. Yeah. Right, the, green the green ones, ones can only operate, only operate in the new there, territories. Yeah, the red you. ones can go out. I was just asking and, yeah, was, yeah. Well, you wouldn't get a green taxi in Hong Kong Island, okay? I didn't know that's where you were. Yeah, well, I said okay. so. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, anyway. Sorry. Fact of the matter is, so it kind of got a bit rowdy. So we're like, okay. He's like, if you don't get out, I'm taking you to the police. So we're like, okay, take us. So he drove us to the police station and the police... 
forced him to drive us <laughs> all the way out there. Well, they were like, should. yeah, they were really nice to us. They were like, sorry, sir, you know, this just just a you know miscommunication. He didn't want to take you, but he doesn't realize that he has to. It's the law. So they told the taxi driver to take us out. Yep. They were super professional. That would have not and been nice. China, he was pissed yeah. he was like the whole way you could tell him he was like Neh. like the steering right, wheel had cool. his his Almost. hand prints he was like <laughs> yeah driving the whole uh-huh. way there but he took us so anyway i'm just saying this is time, not to say the hong kong police are good <laughs> no but i'm just saying every time that i have seen the hong kong police in action prior to these big uh, you know protests they were very professional and nice so right. i presume a lot of them really believe in what they doing of course they have this, you my look, point is it's government you know, influence from beijing yeah and that's so influenced this situation a lot of them quit by yeah, the way a lot of them did quit so that answers your question there a are good of, hong kong yeah, police exactly i think a huge proportion of them were very good people but then they got in this situation that they weren't prepared for correct they didn't want to do what they had to do correct yeah good point anyway um greg r says ryan the painter is a german failed artist is this a metaphor for Ryan Shee being a failed sissy boy artist and becoming a dictator? <laughs> That's a bit of stretch, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Ryan the painter like Hitler, right? Uh, yeah. KW New York Upstate says, Grand, Evergrande thought Burke was world famous after seeing his Chinese art display and paid $1 billion per painting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joshua yeah. Woolman, congratulations on the move, guys. New England is the most beautiful part of the U.S. Actually, we, we ended up moving to Pens- yeah, um, Pennsylvania. Well, yeah, we can, oh, we say, can say that. Yeah, okay. we can say We're in Pennsylvania. We're in Pennsylvania. Uh, but we are close to going to Massachusetts. Yeah, it's just we ended close. up. Now that's another story for another time. Yeah, it's a it's a different thing. We'll tell you all of our motivations in in the future. But it's it's it good, enough. We're it's supposed good to, to say we're in Pennsylvania. No, it's fine. Okay. We're we're out here and we're going back and forth still quite a lot. There's a lot of uh, loose ends to tie up. Like my car is still in California being fixed. We got half of our cars though. Yeah, so we'll be back and forth for a while. So you'll still see us in California from time to time. I hope yep. so. Yeah. I'm going to miss it. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Here's a tip. Uh, Martin Schemmel. There is a German book by... Uh, that's yeah. the Burke one. We're going to have to look that up. Yeah. I mean, I did look it up. I got to make sure it's him. Yeah. Uh, Giorno, Giorno. What if Burke is like a real author, but actually he got counterfeited and some like little kid made all these paintings? Yeah, maybe. Could be a thing. Maybe. Oh, they have pictures of him there. Yeah, but that's such bad painting. <laughs> it's so shit. It's like drawn with a ballpoint pen yes. and like, you know, some cheap watercolors, a lot of those. You know yes. what I mean? Like the kind of thing you buy for your child. You know, that's yeah. That's what it was drawn yeah. with, dude. My daughter makes way better paintings. Yeah, yeah way I better. I know she actually can draw within the lines and stuff. Yeah, you know? whatever paint in the lines. Yeah. Uh, those paintings in the fake town are, are a reflection of the CCP. It's how they view the world and people. That's actually true. Mm. That is like it's all a farce. Absolutely, you really should watch that episode on ADV China. It's It'll hilarious. Give you some perspective. It's yeah. very funny. Um, mm. One love says my weekly tithe to you, gents. All the best. Oh, thank, thank you, you from, so much. Thank you to Singapore. Yeah. Uh, Logos Uber Allies. Hey now, don't judge the toilet paper by its streak. When it comes to modern art, the trick is the treat. That money ain't going to launder itself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a very interesting, a very interesting way of saying way things. Of saying things. Yeah. Saptarshi Singupta, thank you very much. Yeah. Return to Orc Monkey. Uh, hey, don't feel bad about calling that dude's art. People say art is subjective, but the problem is with that idea is it doesn't let you criticize actual crap. Sublim- sub- sublimity is objective. The yeah. thing is, it is crap. Yeah, that was terrible. Sorry, Burke. Because sometimes if there's an, like, someone makes like a streak, yeah, like, streak okay, on a piece of paper, whatever. and you're like, oh yeah, maybe they that can interpret. interprets his feeling of his yeah. soul and you know right. something. And that can be whatever. Whatever. But when you actually have an attempt to draw something. It's an attempt to draw. It's an attempt to draw something. I can see what it is. He wants to make the Canton Tower yeah. and it looks like crap. Right. That's not. It looks like he's dying yeah. of like alcohol poison. He's like throwing up on himself. Yeah. It's, like, it's, just, Ugh. it's really, really bad. <laughs> Bloody Burke. Yeah. yeah, maybe he was like a freaking terminal ill patient or something. I don't and the think doctor so. helped him with his last dying <laughs> breath to like do his last strokes. That, the that's a lot tower. of dying breaths because that whole place is he full was, of his junk. He was like laying in his deathbed on life support and he he lost his like atrophied <laughs> and he's like, my last breath, my last wish is to show the world that the CCP is great. <laughs> Let's draw the beauty of the Canton Tower. It's so bad. And then he died. Yeah. Uh, uh, Grumpy anyway. Limey says <laughs> Burke from British English, the Cockney rhyming slang of Berkshire <laughs> Hunt. Right. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, what's the reaction in China regarding to the release of Meng Wanzhou? We'll probably find out today. Yeah, like, we'll find out. As they It'll be up. all over. It'll be yeah. all over. Was it? 
Yeah, probably it's six six o'clock now. So I, if they wake up in a couple hours, we'll probably start. Massive videos. celebration! Yeah. You're gonna see wait a the, couple hours. You're gonna see all these videos about like, oh, I see she was innocent. Blah blah blah. Mm. Yeah. We'll Sam see. Sam W says, love listening to you guys. Have you uh, guys ever met a gay or lesbian person in China? Yeah, actually, have yeah. gay Chinese friends. Yeah. Uh, can they have a dating life or must be suppressed? Quite suppressed. It's suppressed. Uh, Thanks for knew, knew a few, and it was quite kind of bad. A lot of them had to put up a facade for their families <laughs> yeah, that they were dating same. women. Um, I've told a couple stories. We've told a yeah, couple stories like yeah, that. It's, in the past. it's pretty. It's bad. pretty heartbreaking to be honest. Yeah. I mean, um, Josh Jones never grand. Okay, never grand. I like that. <laughs> Subdarsis yeah. and Gupta says J N B Y printed uh, kids T-shirts with "Welcome to Hell" and "Shoot Indians to Pieces" written on them. I saw that wow. with cartoons depicting the same. Fortunately, people in China hated this and they withdrew the product. Yeah, I mean it's horrible. That's really bad. Yeah. yeah. Victor Washington, hello. It shows you like the bullshit the CCP does and the nationalist rhetoric doesn't always filter down. No, no, you get lots of reasonable people in China. Yes. You know that's the thing. I'd like to think that the vast majority of yeah. Chinese people are actually yeah. very reasonable. They are. They just get caught up in this rhetoric sometimes. Not everyone's a peak. No, of course. <laughs> yeah. Victor Washington, hello, Winston. I'm at the children's book, The Shining Red Star, is one that should have a subtitle, Parental Guidance Necessary. Yeah. I envision a horrible tragedy down the road. Still wishing for a meeting of minds between you and China Unscripted. We've been on China Unscripted twice now, yeah, my honest. friend. Yeah, go look at the podcast they have. Yeah, China yeah. Unscripted, that's right. We're yeah. on there. We're on yeah. there. If you watch them, you would have seen yeah, it. Yeah, twice. Episode. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Hussam Jarar, the CCP has finally banned Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Another move to limit people's liberty and freedom. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yun, thank you. My army Trong Yahoo, thanks. I have in set C. Evergrande invests in Swedish Saab Automotive uh, called Nevs, and they're firing their staff. Lol. Mm. Nevs. Well, Saab was already. Bu- oh no, it was Volvo. It was bought yeah. by G- Geely. Geely. <laughs> the Geely, amount Geely. of shit Chinese car brands with their ridiculous. What was their wow. favorite one? Zat Yeah. Zat Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they come up with the worst names. Like Toyota's a name. Mm. Honda's a name. That's great. Yeah. Don't make up shit like yeah. Zat Yeah. Zat Yeah was not what a was good that? one. What was that? Ridiculous. There's so many. Cars yeah, we we gotta revisit it. You know. Yeah, like I, the best when I went Chinese. Searching car. for my Chinese car and I bought my Chinese car. Remember that. Panda car, the panda. Oh, wow, the Geely panda. Yeah, if you want to have nightmares, go look up a Geely panda. It's the most disgusting looking car you've ever seen. They made a car that looks like a panda. Yes, okay, they really did. <laughs> yeah, the no rear, one wanted it. the rear tail lights look like little panda paws. They made so many the of those front and they dropped face, the price. Yeah, oh man, they try to they, they try to force me to buy that because wait you know, really yeah because they, they obviously couldn't get rid of <laughs> yeah. stock okay and they were like buy this car the geely panda i'm oh like no i'm gosh. buying that what oh was, gosh yeah oh. it's really bad yeah look it's it up so scary. it's a ridiculous it so, thing the gleagle remember the gleagle <laughs> <laughs> legal yeah there's exactly. a brand called eagle it's gleagle yeah, there's gleagle. like squeezed yeah, and like just sou- weird sou- 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 east. that's right yeah sou- east. yeah oh we should gosh. go through that remember the go now the there's go a, now there's a brand called, let's do it let's do our next segment yeah yeah okay uh, we'll do, do it let me write it down it's a brand called go now and they make yes. these crappy knockoff isuzu uh, pickup trucks go now yeah. that's right oh man and they're illegal in big cities yeah you can't drive them into the big cities uh yeah. anyway yeah. um yeah that's a whole thing yeah trump chi trump chi <laughs> <laughs> trump chi trump chi yeah uh anyway mm. uh shall we continue yes let's Got, boycott China says, guess we need to invest in digital yuan now. Sure. Uh, NKV Commissar Tulsi says, there's an image going around on Twitter of the largest Evergrande bondholders. 18 out of 20 were U- European. Can funds, but only two are US-based. Bullet dodged. Mm. Tree Theodore says, um, has you or your family's attitude changed about the world since your documentaries were completed? Well, um, you, if you're talking about the conquering northern China, conquering southern China, stay awesome China documentaries. Yeah, look, things have changed. Yeah. Changed, oh, yeah. Changed massively since then. Our first documentary was in 2015, and things were uh, very different back then. Yeah. You know? And well, after, they were starting to get yeah, bad. Yeah, they were, they were getting bad, but they were different. And after the conquering northern China, things, you know, things went really south during the filming of that. And it really so opened east. our Yeah, it really, really opened our eyes to a lot of things. So things have changed, yeah. yeah. Uh, One Love says, can they not reinvest in cotton? Oh, you mean like cotton? Cotton's dead. <laughs> Can we no, kill Cotton? No, I bought Ballsack's it back. the new meme. Ballsack. Ballsack. Yeah, we can't remember. Oh, Ballsack, by the way. Yeah, yeah, there's a little thing about Ballsack. So, yeah, so apparently, mm-hmm. and I'll, when I say it, you drop that beat. Okay, gotcha. Um, so apparently, 
they were experimenting with trying to release a virus, a MERS virus, inside yes. of bat caves mm -hmm. to infect the bats to see how they would operate. If that was the pandemic that came out of it, because we know that it came from bats being worked sure. on in the lab, manipulated by people like Peter Balsack. Yeah. Oh. Every time I say it. Yeah, yeah okay, I'm sorry. So anyway, um, coronavirus was manipulated, right? Yeah. Most likely. Well, at least they admitted to manipulating coronaviruses derived from bats, right? Yes. Like the protein structure and whatnot. Anyway, if that had been the one that had taken off, it would have had a 30% fatality rate. So it would have wow. been the apocalypse of the world. Yeah. So Peter Balsack is actually behind a lot of this uh, research. Balsack. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, he was. So he's being implicated a little more with a little, little more stuff. A little more stuff. Some, someone's a bit of a sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He better be sweating. Yes. He yeah. is, dude, he must. I would not pay it. I would not want to be him right now. No. Holy crap. For those of you who don't know Balsack, it's Peter Daszak, who's yeah. in, instrumental in covering up the uh, outbreak of COVID-19. He helped yes. the Chinese government tremendously. In oh, the, my in gosh. Early stages. Oh, my gosh. He wrote papers. Personal he, connections. He got people to write you know, these papers to support um, yeah. the Communist Party of China. He was part of that so-called farce of an investigation and said there was nothing to do with the lab or anything. It's a, yeah, he, he's just a complete... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, if only Tacit Turn says, if only people would boycott, nation states could divest, and the international community would sanction, but they would worry about the populace, not the CCP. Yeah. Seth Wilson said, I had a dream where you two were hosting a party in an empty lot near my house. Okay. <laughs> you were building a fortress there to hide from the CCP. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. I had a dream the other day that I, you were driving a Honda Beat... And I was driving a Suzuki Cappuccino, and we were going into Russia to meet no fuckers. Interesting. The YouTuber. That's very interesting. Yeah. Oh, I um, that's bizarre. Well, maybe. What are you, a teenage happen. girl? Oh, I had a dream about this and that. Oh, because people don't have dreams. They don't normally tell. Like, you don't go tell people. Oh, I had this this weird dream, man. Why? <laughs> Why not? I don't know. So you don't have dreams. I mean, if you I just sleep, you're like so <laughs> old and boring. You like lay down at night, and you're just like. Oh, time to wake up. I mean, if I have dreams, I don't remember them very well if I have anything. And it's not like my topic of conversation. Fine. This is the last time I tell you about a dream. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ready, kids. And yeah. Rana, I agree. When people talk about dreams, it's just kind of gay. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> it can be, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just anyway, joking. Yeah. Redicus, Enron yeah. equals evergreen. Uh, yeah, it's, I guess there's some, some, some... What was it called? Similarities? Yeah. Ponzi scheme where you put the future product on the books to fluff their numbers. Yeah. I mean, this is unfortunate. If you look at Evergrande um, and all the, all of these things, it's still the same. Why? What do you got? The chat is saying that people are going to make memes of me having gay dreams <laughs> <laughs> on the <laughs> subreddit. Don't do it. I'm, go ahead. I don't care. Yeah. Or return to Ark Monkey. Do y'all think that she's return to Maoism is partially an attempt to head off potential CCP collapse due to economic upheaval by removing the people's ability to have money bit by bit ahead of time? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I could get behind that. Yeah. Um, well, you know how we've spoken about this before. Deng Xiaoping said to be uh, rich is glorious, to be wealthy allegedly. is glorious. Yeah. He and, did Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did. And then Xi Jinping's bringing it back to, oh, we want moderate prosperity. So, you know, he wants to cool this all down. He doesn't like the way things are going. He doesn't want people to be rich because he knows it's not obtainable for everyone. Right. You know? True. Hmm. Uh Loy Mike 31 do you think China will continue to close down and isolate from the West? Thanks for all you guys do. Absolutely, positively. That's what, That's what we've been harping on about. Actually, what Xi Jinping yeah. wants. Yes, absolutely. Forcing foreigners out, foreign companies out. You know, it, Most you importantly, to, to make China self-reliant so that it doesn't mm. have to abide by the, the world's rules. Yeah. Really, and exactly. to, suck, to suck off the other systems of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, one love uh, from Singapore. <laughs> what? <laughs> Here Never we mind. go. My gay dreams. <laughs> let's, let's come on. Let's continue. Yeah. You know, you're in your Honda Beat, and I'm in my cappuccino. You, <laughs> the world's our oyster. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if they don't pay the foreign investors <laughs> yep. based on capital, I'm not gonna be able to live this down. No. It will hurt them badly. Massive foreign investment. Are you trying to say something wrong with gay dreams? I didn't say anything. Massive foreign <laughs> investment will die best. I don't yeah. think that they will do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, Matt Peters, you guys see Lola's Farley video? 
I saw his new video where he, this, the college he went to in China, the Chinese school he went to, they banned his name in oh, the really? college. Yeah. I haven't seen that. They don't allow the students to talk about his name. Oh, wow. Yeah, someone called him. Someone called him about it in Chinese. That's insane. Told him. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, you, you guys see Lila Farley's new video where a random guy in the street knew Wolf Warrior, and, and he asked if Lila knew sea milk. It was super cool. Oh, that's oh, awesome. That's I cool. didn't see that. Can yeah. you find it? I'll post the clip on the subreddit. Yeah. Uh, Reddit.com Reddit slash r slash ADV China. I got to catch up on Lila Farley's stuff. It's been a Yeah, while. I just watched one of his mm. clips today. He's great. Mm. Jordan Laramore, have you all read uh, B- Blueprint for Revolution by Suraja Popovic? I no. recommend it. it. might be useful for activists in China. I did not. Mm, no, I haven't read that kind of thing. David Neufeld, Hmong settles with the U.S. today. No need for extradition. Hopefully this brings Michael's home. No more to be gained from keeping Hmong. Boycott Huawei. Yeah, and hopefully Huawei is implicated in some really nasty things because yeah. guess what? They are. Yeah, we'll um, see. Ty Sloan, India has a missile that can hit Chinese cities. Okay. Cool. That's that's not very nice to say. Mm. <laughs> don't hit Chinese cities. Please don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ty Slum, do you think it's funny that China insults the quad? Why would I think that's funny? <laughs> China loves to insult it's everyone. It's so cringe. If you, if you guys, should we do a whole episode at some point about um, the Global Times editorial cartoons? Yes, absolutely. They are so bad. If we, we just go put that... A whole episode. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I think everybody needs to see the... Should that be next episode unless yeah. something happens? Yeah. Okay. Unless something massive happens, I think yeah. we're going to do this. You guys have to see what Chinese political cartoons look like. They are the most ridiculous thing ever. And we'll be able to help help interpret them for you because there's quite a lot of hidden little things in it'll there. be it'll be fun yeah it'll be fun yeah yeah fun one yeah <clears throat> i think cool. people will love that um koala 1203 hey milk and hey, matt sorry i was wondering where the name sea milk came from chocolate milk yes no <laughs> yes. condensed milk it's condensed milk yeah mm-hmm. tai sloan thoughts on china not wanting taiwan and the cctpp of course they don't want them no the... <clears throat> they don't want taiwan to be recognized by anything or anyone mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Dan Chapman, you're welcome, guys. Glad you enjoy them. Australians shorten everything. Just end an I, E, or O. Just la- being lazy. Like it's doggo. Just cool. They say doggo. Oh, Small ah, human. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that where that came from? It must be. Yeah, do- oh. doggo came from Australia. Oh, doggo speaks. Doggo speaks the worst. Oh, I love you, Australia, but you gotta stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no more no doggo. No more doggo speak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, small Pupper. Hu- oh. Yeah, small human. Uh, my uh, heart. Yeah. Me hot. Yeah. Me yeah. hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stevie <Smooth> Mulford. <laughs> yeah. Trans girl from Australia. Keep up the amazing work you're doing. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry for dissing Australia. <laughs> yeah, but I got to exactly. say, you guys got to quit the, the shortening of words. <laughs> yeah. Ty Sloan. Thoughts on China, Pakistan, Russia, Taliban, and North Korea? Um. Mm. These are a lot of thoughts, Ty Sloan. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of in here. I'll I think let we, let's point. defer that one. Yeah, let's yeah. circle back to that one. He said, thanks. Uh, sorry, Saya says, sold all my Chinese stocks. Thanks, Sir B and Milky. Stop it. Yeah. Don't make this a I'm, thing. I'm glad you did. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. A lot of people might think, that, oh, buy low or something. Please be careful. Yeah. It's be, too be unpredictable. Yeah. Well, we but we cannot give financial advice because yeah. we are not. But we wouldn't. No. We yeah. Wouldn't just invest. be careful. Yeah. Uh, Taciturn says Wuhan clan. Yep. Pyburn says don't use the Y suffix, but that's what people... We don't just use the Y suffix, but that's what people notice most. O and A are also big ones. Servo, Bottolo, Mac is... Oh, uh, die. Is so Mac like mac and cheese? Mac yeah. and McDonald's. No, I think it's mac and no, cheese. No, I've heard Mac is it's really? McDonald's. Oh, yes, is it? they say okay. let's go to Mac is. And I'm like, really? can you just say McDonald's? Okay. Or Mickey D's or something. Actually, that's, that's bad too. That's bad too. Stop. Like that Golden Arches, whatever. No, I don't think anyone's ever said that. They do. Let's go to Golden Arches. Yes. <laughs> they say that. In South Africa. That's been said. People say that. <laughs> they do. They say it. I'm not lying here. But we never shorten our local treats like Tim Tams or Vegemite. Now, yeah. that's not cool. I mean, what would Ve- you call it? Veggie or something? Vegemite. Yeah. Vego. <laughs> Vegemi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. Vegemite. Tim Tammy. Vegemite sound like a female version of crabs. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's continue, <laughs> anyway. please. David Newfeld, CC, CCP pants, shishi pants, shishi poo, shishi pee. I'm not okay. going to read all those. <laughs> okay. Norman Flair, doubling down because you guys actually get your facts together first, unlike CNN, Fox, MSNBC, rushing to say Thank anything. Thank you. Appreciate we appreciate that. And I hope, I know it doesn't get the views. There are other channels out there that literally will put out a China video every single day, mm. like personal channels, big news. And we like to sit on stuff and look yeah. and see what's happening and talk to people. And if we ever make any mistakes, we'll be honest about it. We try yes. our best to just, you know, tell it like we see it and from our own experience. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Lou M. Can we talk about Ryan Xi's UN speech? We, we can, can do it next time. Absolutely. I actually have that in the notes. We had to cut five things. Yeah. 
Uh, Sherry Crosby, Ty Sloan, thoughts on Biden and she's UN Cold War speech. Well, same thing. Yeah, we'll talk uh, about that next Batista, time. Lawrence Batista says, I wanted to say thank you guys for your advocacy against the CCP. Been supporting the stream for a while, educating with friends about China. Love you guys, and we love you really too. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Ty Sloan says, who are the real owners of China, <clears throat> if not the CCP? The people. Yeah. Uh, Harambe Honda, can't believe Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou has been released, praying Michael can be sent back to Canada. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to keep um, up on that situation. We will, don't worry. We'll let you know exactly, but... Yeah. Um, kind of predicted that something like this would happen yes mm-hmm. um i'm sorry it did a snap yeah wow there's actually a lot to get through here sorry okay. guys um there it is China. patrick yeah mm-hmm. waja i'm an online esl teacher is currently seeing my former students spreading ccb propaganda on instagram instagram Inter- interesting can't help but feel like i made this happen how did you make it happen what did you do, Patrick? Mm. What did you do, Patrick? Look yeah. deep in your heart. <laughs> Are you getting paid Wu Mao's here on the side? Oh, well, maybe joking. it's because he encouraged them to go on Instagram and stuff. Um, yeah, maybe have a little chat with them and just open their mind. Don't yell at them. Uh, just open their mind a little it's bit. Tough. It's tough when you're young and impressionable. I know, I know. It's I like s- China's I a new s- thing or whatever. I saw a lot of students go down the dark path. It was I used, awful. I used to shill for China. Mm-hmm. I did. Actually, mm-hmm. I was thinking about doing a video at some point. I have another YouTube channel. Oh, that I maybe. made when I first moved there. Okay. And it's still there. You guys won't find it though. Yeah. Um, it's like tiny. Okay. But I used to shill for China. Oh, really? Like, and I'm not talking about shill for like, like, I, cause I do shill for China. I like, I love China. Yeah. I used to shill for the CCP. Oh, really? Yeah. Ouch. I have some video evidence and it's interesting. It'll be interesting to show you how you can change, you know, over time. Yeah. With experience. That'd be interesting to look at actually. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm not ashamed of it. I mean, it's, I changed my opinion. Yeah. T did did he miss? Hey mm. guys, I loved your bar story. <laughs> it wasn't a bar. It was, it was like a, a kind of an out, out, outdoor like a seating shitty, arrangement. Yeah, like a picnic chair. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those plastic the, next to the road and those sewage. And like, pink plastic yeah. chairs that you get. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty. Uh, we actually have footage from like that area, so we can show you what it looked like. Yes. Not the actual event, of course, but favorite Chinese beers. I don't. I don't really like Chinese beer. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna go for one, I think Qingdao is the best. For me, I don't like Qingdao. I, but I there was this one, one I had in lo, uh, this lo, a lot of local areas will have their own beer. Mm-hmm. Sometimes those are good. I had one in Air Mongolia. It was really really good. Yeah. Wings Qingdao, zero. You, can't, you can't go wrong with Qingdao though. Except as when long it's fake. As and don't we get fake. Die. Yeah, that almost killed us. Should we tell that story again someday? Yeah, one day. But yeah, just. <laughs> Qingdao, if you know it's come from a reputable source. You, you know? know what? You know when people say, "Oh, I almost died." We actually mean yeah. that. No, we actually we almost, almost died. took a week to recover. Yeah. yeah. Wing zero eighty three. Culturally, how does China handle different sexualities? Since it's not talked about, we kind of just talked about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ripoff Productions LLC on the subject of this Evergrande bubble and CCB bailout. Doesn't this just delay the crash or make it worse? Since it fi- uh, once it finally does happen, so this won't destroy. Uh, won't this still destroy the Chinese economy and CCP legitimacy eventually? Eventually. Eventually. But, you know, obviously what they're going to do is once they've kind of got past this current problem, is the government's probably going to split Evergrande up into different, you know, companies, really, so that they can prevent it from becoming this big juggernaut in the future. So they'll probably take this segment of the, the company and t- you know take it over as a state enterprise and move it there, that part there, Correct. split it up and... There's a lot of things they're probably going to do. At the end of the day, they're hoping for more of a soft landing, and hopefully they can kind of do a bit of a correction when this all comes uh, together. We'll see. We're, you know, at the end of the day, you've got people that have been predicting the fall of the Chinese economy for years and decades now even. Yeah. Okay, because in any normal circumstance, it would have collapsed. Because when you look at the crazy amount of money that people are paying for these useless, absolutely useless apartments, and I can say that they're not worth anything. They're worth like $1,000 maybe, okay, in materials or whatever they use. It's disgusting how badly constructed most of these things are and just how inconvenient it is, and it doesn't belong to you. It still belongs to the government. You're just leasing it. When you look at this, in any normal situation, in any other country, you'd reach a point where people would be like, this is not worth it. What the hell is going on? But because the Chinese government has complete control over the banks, over the media, over the way everything is done there, being able to quash protests, being able to quash dissenting voices, being able to just sort anything out, they can always step in and stop things from crashing. And that's what they've been doing for decades now. Is every time it looks like the housing market's about to go nuclear, they step in and they cool it down with some new restrictions or some new rules. And then when it gets right. too cold, they come in and they like say, okay, now you can get have interest-free loans and things like that to boost it up again. Right. 
Then they're like, oh, you, you, you cannot have more than X amount of properties if you're married. Then people get divorced so they can buy more properties, that kind of crap. Then they come in and say, look, no, if you've been divorced, you're not allowed to, if it's only been, a, you know, they have all these ways. But at the end of the day, the reason it hasn't crashed is because the Chinese government controls everything. And that's not something that the rest of the world is used to seeing. So most logical Western countries and societies and so on, you would look at this and you'd say that has to crash. Naturally, it has to crash. But not in China, because nothing is natural in China. It's all run by the CCP, you know? Anyway. Correct. Um, shout out to Yingling Beer, by the way, now that we're in Pennsylvania. Um, it's something that we weren't able to get in California before. So mm -hmm. good suggestion from everyone out there. Thank you. Tacit turn. Uh, have you ever noticed PLA camouflage isn't dyed thread, but dye sublimated, not even uh, near infrared? Would that, that would, would that be an example of Chapadoa, like the inability of the PLA to sit still? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Sherry yeah. Crosby, if the CCP was an individual, would he be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder? Yes. yes. Absolute sociopath. Correct. Uh, Ty Slum, did you hear Beijing 2022 is still going to go on? Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you should you boycott know, you it. You can boycott it if you can. Boycott, you, you know boycott. what you should do? Um, my friend Matthias Daly had a great uh, piece of advice. If you see a company that's supporting the Beijing Olympics, call them and they have to pay someone to sit there and tell you why they supported it. Yeah. And you sit there and you say, why would you do this? The Uyghur genocide. And you list off all the laundry list of crimes mm -hmm. and say, why is your company supporting this? Why do you feel comfortable doing this? And they yeah. actually have to waste their money to do that. And it does get through to them eventually. They have to go through these calls. Well, you have to hold people to account. Yes. It's just like with apartheid South Africa, you know. Right. There Correct. were sanctions and companies refused to uh, deal with South Africa because of what was going Correct. on. It's, it do, should be the same it, with China. Do it with China. Yeah. Don't be a double standard. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard W., SpaceX recently put four civilians in space. When will the Chinese National Space Administration, all oh, those dear Taikonauts, yeah, yeah, Taikonauts yeah. Uh, attempt to copy that or try to beat it? Uh, mm. I don't Who know. knows? We'll see. Yeah. Time, time, still a, a time away, I guess. Activated Complex says, thanks for all the hard work. Love the content. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, sorry, because anyone that like like anyone who admires and respects Chinese culture or culture in general, I despise the CCP and what it's doing in China and abroad. Thank yes, you. Josh Jones, Wuma are getting paid with never built apartments. Now. <laughs> never built, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that right. <laughs> uh, Utaku says Uncle Tack here. Hi, you two characters. Best luck on the East Coast when you finally realize Texas is the best state. Move here. Nah, <laughs> I like I, like Texas, I like Texas. I like Texas too, but I don't plan on moving. I remember there. I went there to a restaurant and there was this big sign on the wall. It said "Tip and Ain't Just for Cows." I can see why that would be charming and fun. Yeah, because you're not from the U.S. And people were wearing cowboy hats. To be fair, well, we're in the part of Pennsylvania we're in. If we, I can show you areas of Pennsylvania that it, you could find some stuff like that. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Yep. Uh, milk dog coin, milk doge coin, oh, milk, milk doge, doge coin. coin. That yes. would be our coin. That would be our absolutely coin. Kyle yes. Kingston. If we had a shit coin, yeah. Jay Leo, the IOC recently suspended North Korea indefinitely for not going to the 2021 Tokyo Summer Olympics. If nations do the same for the 2022 Winter Olympics, maybe they can meet the same fate by the IOC. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's entirely possible. But then again, you know, you have to stick by morals. You know, yeah. we know what's going on. You wouldn't support... No one would support... You wouldn't download a car. <laughs> exactly, no. But no one in their right mind would support any country in the world if there was genocide no, going on. No, There was human rights abuses, you know, all this warmongering, all this other crap. You wouldn't support it unless it was China. Why does China always get the green card when it comes to this? They're just like, it's okay. It's just China. Just imagine... Why? Imagine it was Brazil had like right. concentration camps yeah. at the moment yeah. right now. Brazil was doing all the same yeah. things that China's People doing. People would boycott the hell out of it. Of I'm pretty sure. They wouldn't go to the Brazil Olympics because no. they hi they hold Brazil and any yeah. other country to a higher standard power, yeah. than China. Yeah. Why do they hold China to such a low yeah. standard? Yeah. It's like China, you you suck. You can do whatever you want. You you can just do it's whatever also, it's the international it's, okay. it's the international connections as yeah well. exactly but that, it's the just like they hold it to such a low standard they do like they china do. could do whatever yeah that's they, true they just let it go do whatever you want but every other country is held to a very high standard you know if yeah. you say something well when you, said an american uh diplomat or something says something it's held to a much higher standard than when a, a chinese diplomat says something it's got to stop we're supposed to be equal here yes you know Filipino white boy, what do you make of France being upset about Australia pulling out of their sub deal for U.S. nuclear subs? Think China might exploit? Oh, yeah, they already have. I've seen articles in the Global Times. I mean, wow. <laughs> imagine that. 
<laughs> Imagine that. But no, they, they, of course, it's, it's unfortunate. I'm sure the French <laughs> people aren't very happy. No. You know? Just. Maybe uh, some freedom fries on the menu. <laughs> Lee Barrett's grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just love that account. Yeah, that's that no, funny. Stand with Lithy. Mm-hmm. Lo- Don't say Lithy. <laughs> yes, Lithuania. Lithuania. Yeah. I loved your show this week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hong Tran, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Dylan Vienet, also a shout out to Slovenia. Mm. Yes, Slovenia. Ah, Slovenia. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, you know, absolutely, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about Slovenia. Yeah. They voiced their support for Lithuania too. The little guy mm. standing up to CC, and then the CCP. The irony is the little guy standing up to the CCP. Yeah. I'm back in the underdogs. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'll invest in Slovenia and Lithuania. Any absolutely. Day. Yeah. You guys give me something to invest in. I will. Mm-hmm. We actually met some people from Lithuania. We did. Yeah, that we were that? potentially going to work with uh, in LA. Remember when we were did the VidCon thing? Yes, yes. Very nice people. Very, very nice. Cool people. company too. Yeah. Didn't work out, but that was fine. Yeah, now I remember. Rick F., which part of Massachusetts did you move to? Pennsylvania. We were going to move to Massachusetts, but that deal fell through. Massachusetts. It's the greatest. We don't know anymore. Yeah. The place we looked at actually got snatched up before we could buy it. Yeah, exactly. I won't say by who. You know, it's just nice to be here because I can look out the window here and we've got this nice long driveway. We can see whoever's coming in, whoever's that's going true. out. It's just that's true. So much nicer. It is weird operating out of a house, though. Yeah, because like it was kind of there was a there's a difference in work dynamic when you have to drive through an office. Yeah. Right. Versus if you're in a house, because it's kind of like you're always home. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know kind of I mean? a weird situation. It's uh, nice though. Yeah. Uh, it's it's beautiful to be able to have some actual land, you know. Yes, the nature is great. Yeah. I will say being able to look at nature is fantastic because yeah. usually it was kind of like sprawl. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're, it's we're, nice. And kind um, of dry. Mass messages says sad to say the PL Minister of Foreign Affairs Loki criticized Lithuania saying Poland support one China during the meeting with Lithuanian counterpart. That's a pity. Poland? Come on. We're about to forget about Poland. Do you remember when George, did you know about that? When George Bush said, you forgot about Poland, it became like a meme. Oh, no. Okay. We're about to forget you, Poland, if you don't step your ass no, up. Poland should joking. know what we it's like. Poland. Yeah. Yeah. Know. I mean, Pol- Poles, to be fair, hate communism. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, but I'm worried about the government. I have seen the conservative government there is cozying yeah. up to China pretty good. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, Filipino white boy. Mm-hmm. I was looking at footage of students studying for the Gaokao. I have n- haven't never seen anything like it. I have ADHD and I know I would fail instantly. How do Chinese students with ADHD deal with it? They end up being unsuccessful people. Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible situation. There's so much pressure. Mm-hmm. And having taught a lot of students that were going through the Gaokao, it's, it's the most stressful part of a, a Chinese person's life. Yes. Honestly, it is. It's probably there's nothing more stressful than that. Congratulations. PowerShift says, congrats on the move, guys. Get out those snow shovels and buy you a nice all-wheel drive vehicle. Do you one better. We got a, tra- a lot more tractor that we yes. hooked up. It's and we're awesome. about to put the, the plow on it. Yeah, a snow plow on the front. It's actually fun. I was sitting on the tractor and just mowing the lawn. It's just kind of cool to I, do that. Yeah, I, don't, I won't get into what you were actually doing. <laughs> Drinking and driving. You're allowed to do that on your own property. <laughs> I know. Have a beer and mow the lawn. Joking. Come on. Joking. I was so proud of you when I saw you mowing the lawn. I was like, you're finally American. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Super cool. I love it. Because um, out in California, we didn't have a lawn. No, no. So we finally have a lawn. Yep. Um, Ty Sloan, does India replace China? Nervous lately. No. no. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Yuli Yong says, I'm in PA too. Have fun cool. with the winters. When it's not going to be pleasant. At least mm. I'm used to it because I grew up in it. I grew up not too far away. Yeah, um, Winston, this is going to be a new yeah. thing for him. It's going to be new. I'll let, you, I'll let you guys know how it is. Juan yeah. says, is Winston ready for the Northeast winter? Well, Probably this not. A, this is a popular sentiment. People, I mean, hey, I could get into snowmobiling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I could do that. Yeah, we yeah. could do that. Hmm. Uh, hung train. ADV on snowmobiles. We could do that. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm hi from a Vietnamese guy in Norway. What's hey. the name of the Chinese New Year song you guys hate? I oh, actually the, like that song. The Toy Dolls. What are you doing? Yeah, just just Bro. just at the Toy Dolls. That's what it is. Yeah, right? No, the China Dolls. China Dolls. The China yeah. Dolls. The China Dolls and it's called no, it's Chinese a, New Year. No, no. Ah! Why would you like that song? You crazy? It actually gives me a headache. Where is it? There, there it is. There it is. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, they got to put that on. Give me a second, guys. It's from Thailand, believe it or yeah, not. It's not even a Chinese song. It is in Chinese, but... <laughs> okay, where is it? Unmute. Sawadee so so Ka, did you hear that? Yeah, it it's is. It's Thailand. 
I'm gonna Chinese, just fast forward. This is the most popular thing in China. They can't even make their own music. Yeah. Wait for the oh actual. Oh my gosh. Here it goes. Why are you doing this? Stop, you're gonna get copyrighted. <laughs> you just imagine that on the most tinny. The loudest. Loud, loud, you know those little speaker boxes that are like battery powered or whatever? They put it down. It's only treble. There's no bass, but it's got that tinny noise. And it's just played 24 7 around China, around Chinese New Year. You just hear that song. You go to any market or anything, and you only hear that on full blast. It's horrible. It, it splits your ears. You know, like you hear George Michael's Last Christmas every Christmas time, everywhere, and it's really annoying? Last yeah. Christmas. Well, this is worse Taking because they play only heart. this and this only. The yeah. very next anyway. day, yeah. you give it anyway. away. Anyway, you know, okay, so stop, please, next. <laughs> uh, or, return to Orc Monkey says, oh, hey, I grew up in PA. Cool. Horace Looper Call, the War Master, <laughs> says, if you're a member, how do we email or contact you? Um, you will find a way. You will absolutely find a way. Actually, there's a business email on our yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. All you have to do is click about. Yeah, go to the about it. section, yeah. Return to Orc Monkey. Yep, I agree with you guys on Burke's art. Um, I really, I meant to type, don't feel bad about criticizing his art. Yes. <laughs> Project's done poorly. Winston, do you have a barbecue yet? We sure do. Mm-hmm. You must complete your journey to the dark side. Get a smoker and cook oh, a burger. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. don't worry. Don't you worry. We're all geared up. I got a friend who's in the, I met him in uh, down, down in uh, Long Beach and he works for the, the well, he's in the Marines. He so works for the Marines. He, he does. He's a Marine. He does. He works for the Marines. <laughs> he is a Marine. He's a Marine. Um, and he bought the smoker because he didn't have space at his apartment, so he bought it over to store at my house. And mm. he'd come over every once in a while, and we'd uh, smoke some meat, and it was amazing. Smoking these meats, it's amazing. Meat. We gotta get one in Pennsylvania. It's, I'd, I'd never done, I'd never smoked meat before, you know, until I, I did that. It was really good. Yeah, it's not never like smoked meat. Someone's <laughs> no. definitely making a oh, game out of that. That's yeah, enough. Let's well, but now on. you've now you're saying you have smoked meat now. <laughs> <laughs> was it in the gay dream in the in the meat smoker okay <laughs> okay <laughs> you put like apple wood and the way you prepare it so yeah. it's really cool you put like salt water water and salt okay <laughs> <laughs> together with like some you cut up oranges yeah. and you put the apple wood and the different kinds to of make wood it together taste differently. and you soak the wood for like a day oh, okay. okay and then then you put them well, we don't have a smoker, smoker here yet yeah so we should we'll, get one. we'll get one yeah okay our foreign companies are trying to pull out of china i've heard stories about it Yes, absolutely. Yes. A lot of them Look at are. Samsung. Yeah. Uh, Ryan the Pooh says, Meng Wanzhou came to an agreement. Yeah, we already know about we, that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. How, mm. mu- uh, so much the, how much is the West to blame for the growth of the CCP? A lot. A lot. In is fact, it, 100% entirely the West's fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, it's well, not, it is. It's let's the West's say fault. 10% for having a constitution that allows for absolute disturbing brutality. And then they fed that system. I mean, the thing is, the CCP would have probably just collapsed or it would have continued Correct. with this very yeah. stable, like, you You're know, right. stagnant thing if it wasn't for and then maybe the West liberalized. investing and yeah. allowing them to co- Feeding the trade system. with the world. It is the West's fault that the CCP is the way it is Because they banked on the CCP liberalizing. Yes, and it didn't. And it didn't. No. Um, we didn't support the USSR and eventually bankrupt. That's yeah. correct. And mm-hmm. it's the chi- China is absolutely reliant on the rest of the world. 100%. There's no question about it. They import it. most of their energy, like, you know, um, coal and stuff. They import their food, you know? There's yes. a lot, a lot going on. People think China's a massive country, but guess what? It doesn't produce its own food. It imports most of it. That's something to think about. Tony Tsang says, How si Tsang San, which means the good things come in three. Yeah. Uh, just some extra for getting the sponsorship. Thank you very much, Coney. Thank you. Um, Mike Huter. Appreciate that. Nice to see you, Mike. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, great show. Congrats on the move. Those trips to the smog office on Worthless Whips would stress me out. Oh, to man, yeah. That anymore. And, you know, we did another <laughs> one before we left. Yeah. Because we got another car we haven't put up there yeah. yet. Again, same old story. I'm so sick and tired of fixing cars to, like, meet smog. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Someone in the crowd, have you gentlemen heard about the new censorship in FGO game on Chinese server? It's connected with a new security law. Also, some Chinese manners, please. Oh, we yeah. Okay, that. we can get some Chinese manners. Show you Chinese manners. <laughs> Jacob Redman, anything to help the cause? Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Tess, Tess it turns says SARS China, bird flu China, swine flu China, COVID China. What the heck? There's a pattern here. No shit. Subtarshi Singupta, mm-hmm. uh, do any Taiwanese or non-PRC Chinese use Zhongguo to re- refer to their country? Yeah. They call themselves Zhongguoren, yes. Or, 
or Huaren. So it's like the Chinese, uh, Taiwanese, yeah. or other oh, Taiwanese. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll call it Zhongguo for sure. I mean, no, Taiwanese they, people absolutely no, no, call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. No, they will call China Zhongguo, yeah. Yeah. But they won't call Taiwan Zhongguo. No, they will. No, no, no. They will call, Taiwanese people will call China Zhongguo, but mm-hmm. they won't say that's their country. Yeah. They won't call this, themselves Zhongguo, but they will call them, sometimes call themselves Huaren, which means yeah. like Chinese ethnicity. People. Yes, exactly. Huaren. Uh, Kimberly9296 lives in Europe and all over the US now settled in PA love it welcome thank Excellent. you very much Kimberly thank you neighbors return to Orc Monkey Winston 10 bucks for your most recent weird dream we need more meme fodder <laughs> come on I just don't have you dream I, I I just think of like horrible anxiety things sometimes <laughs> what is fun? you know what I mean it's like when you really have to get up the next yeah, day or something oh, it's like yeah, yeah. stuff just swimming around in your head no, that when kind you're of sleeping thing. nothing Come on, you can't be the only one. Everyone dreams. No, I, I just can't remember any. I Are they tangerines? <laughs> no, no tangerine dreams here. Okay. But I'll tell you one thing. If I do have a dream and I remember it, I will tell you guys just so that I can, you know, I'll straighten that whole thing out. I got you. Sound I good? See, I see what you mean. I think yeah. I know what you dream of. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, Absolutely not. <laughs> Go on to all I dream of him getting locked up for what he did to the world. Yeah. Fair enough. You know, that's like a, a real dream. Yeah. yeah, complicit into you know with the CCP, that guy. Have you thought of uh, mm. visiting the DMZ once in South Korea? Yep, absolutely. We'll go there when we go to South Korea. Yeah, for you sure. hang glide. We like we'll stand in that room that goes in between the two. Does that let you stand in the room? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. You can cross right in in the building. Everyone does that every time. Oh, okay. It'll be fun. You mm. hang glide. Thanks for talking about cultivate. I've been using it. You're welcome. Yeah, it's good. Gimple. Nothing wrong with dreams. Wet dreams are fun. Hey. <laughs> Put put it away. Put it away. <laughs> the YouTube. Will you ever discuss positive China news? Is there any every day? Otherwise, you just appear as salty as the shills. Well, I mean, what do you want us to say about positive else, Chinese who news? Who else is doing what we're doing? Just yeah. tell me, please yeah. tell me. Who else yeah. is doing what we're doing with with ten plus years of experience in China? Yeah. To tell you why things are happening. Yeah. Who else There's, is doing that? I don't know what you want want us to say. We have over the years covered everything positive. You want ten that years we of can. content, positive content. Go go have a look. <laughs> Things and, have changed. You know, when it comes to being positive about China, <sighs> I can be very positive when it comes to Chinese people. I can be positive when it comes culture, to the Chinese food. language, the food, the, the culture. The provinces, the places you can travel to. Nothing wrong with any of those. But you have to understand that what's happening right now is of grave consequence to the world. Yes. What the CCP is doing, not only towards Chinese people, whom we both care a great deal about, but to the entire world the, <clears throat> the ccp is a detriment to the entire world right Correct. now. we have to keep an eye on it and it doesn't help if we sit around blowing sunshine up people's asses about the ccp no. because they do that enough yeah all the shills do that there's plenty most of the rest of the world does that you know through media and so on they buy china's bullshit most of the time you know the ccp's bullshit i should say so you need a voice that speaks the truth Correct. from experience and that's what we do uh, Lou M says BTS is better than Rammstein. No, actually, they lost the poll. Yes, so Rammstein after, is the winner. Yeah, it was seventy six percent or seventy four percent of people chose Rammstein over BTS. What a surprise! What a surprise! I'm so proud of our audience. Yes. I, I got to tell you, <laughs> Scott R C Roscoe Gillen, you guys are awesome. Love your content. Keep it up and never back down. We won't. We Don't won't. worry about it. David Peacock, is there any chance that a fraction of the inner CCP wants to morph into a democratic government? Of course. Yes. It could be a fraction. Mm-hmm. Dion Chapman, I'm walking my doggo while listening to this. Stop it! Dion. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. the gifts, though. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I never used it before. Tessa Turn, Harambe is ancient Chinese medicine. What's <laughs> going on with your Wikipedia? Uh, people apparently are working out. I don't know. I, I have nothing to do with this. I do know that I asked on the subreddit if people could look into it. Yeah. And apparently people are having a discussion, which I've seen. We're planning on covering our Wikipedia fiasco. because we a big one. We actually have people that work uh, doing Wikipedia stuff that say, they were like, I didn't think this before, but after looking into your guys' discussions, pretty sure the CCP's infiltrated uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. So they're going to help us out well, with the video. You saw how Wikipedia sh- shut down those yeah. seven power users from China. And it, it, it was implicating us. Yeah. So we've got a big thing about that. We'll talk about it. It's coming, that. coming up. Yeah. Uh, Siege, how much EU is in CCP pocket? Will EU eventually ally with China? No. After all, the ideological base manifesto was written by Italian communists. No, don't, don't. No. Let's, let's take off the yeah, tinfoil yeah. hat. Yeah, it's Ooh. okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Ty Sloan, will TikTok ever get banned? I don't know. Unfortunately. Shaze. <laughs> Probably Please make not. an episode about the China-Indian border clashes. Soldiers on both sides are attacking each other with melee weapons. It's been going on for a long time now. <laughs> True. And we have spoken about it on multiple uh, occasions. Also, I'll do a TikTok update next episode. I got most of my content re-approved. Uh, 
Oh, did you? Yeah, after okay. going through the process, but they definitely effed up my account. Okay. So I'll get into it later. Cool. Uh, Wing083, what is fast food like in China? Take out food, that sort of thing. There's lots of it. Do you oh yeah, favorite thing you get. You end up you actually because most apartments are so small and it's difficult to cook. At least, obviously, if your families, the grandparents cook and stuff. But like most people that I knew would rather order out. Oh order yeah, delivery or go out for sure. I like there are lots of cheap little restaurants near my house. I would eat local food. My friends would always get KFC. And it's a fun. very strange situation because in the West, it's cheaper to cook at home yeah. than it is to go out. But in China, it's, it's cheaper the other to way go around, out yeah. than to cook at home. For so sure. most people do eat from the restaurants. <clears throat> yeah. Johnny Azul, what's the Chinese relationship with Ch- Japanese IP? Do they pirate the Japanese too? Of course they do. Course. Big time. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Booth, I'm from Philly. If you guys come here, it would be so cool if you had a fan meet. Very close. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Dovetail, Chinese students go out for international studies, but I am hearing majority of them return to China. Why is that? Do they have a hard time adjusting to the outside world? No, it's called uh, haigui, uh, sea turtles. And the reason um, Chinese students go and study abroad is not to go stay abroad. It's to learn certain skills and give them a better chance of getting a better job when they come back. Mm-hmm. Because it's always been, at least historically... Yeah, not some, so much now. But, yeah, yeah, not as much now. But <clears throat> if you had a degree from like a, a British university or an American university, you are more sought after than someone who has a local uh, degree from a Chinese university. It's just right. that you get a better position, you know, and you'll right. get a better job, a higher paying job. So that's right. it. So sea turtles go over, they learn, and then they come back. Right. So they call called Haigui. Right. Mm. Ozzy Baby says, Hi, Winston, got the Cultivate extension after watching your last video. Amazed by the amount of stuff from China, no longer buying anything from there. Excellent. Nice. Yeah. Cultivate's Richard Hayes. Really it good is plug-in. a really good plugin. It is a really good plugin. Yeah. The CCP will be brought to its knees when these terribly high built high rise buildings start crashing down in en masse in 20 to 25 years. Well, look, they are definitely mm. crumbling and that's something if you watch ADV China, which I hope you do, our other channel, yeah. we've got a big one coming up on all. Yes. That, so, Charles Dahlgren, thank you very much. Um Tai Slob says something interesting. The Global Times Hu Shi Jin was a uh, 1989 Tiananmen Square protester. Really? Yeah, I think he was. Interesting. Sick Lid, congratulations. Welcome to Pennsylvania Dutch country. Uh, I'll help you raise your barn. That would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. We actually need that. <laughs> yep. Aaron Steger, I'm late to the stream today. Is CCP banning crypto trades mentioned? Yes, it yes, was. You'll yes. find out. Mm-hmm. Go back. Uh, Ruth Power, so cool. Han Sanabi watches you. Who's that? I'm actually not sure. It would be it. amazing to hear you guys chat to a socialist. You believe it or not, we actually have very far left supporters because um, the CCP t- is not a socialist government, <laughs> believe it or not. Oh, yeah. Would you be surprised if I told you the CCP is not communist? Okay. It's actually an authoritarian dictatorship. You know, that's the thing. We don't like to um, pin yeah. ourselves in, uh, we on are any in, side of the fence. No, very there's no much point. It's a middle. completely... The, the current CCP issue has nothing to do with what political leaning you, you have. You can be completely right-wing, you <laughs> yeah. can be completely left-wing, you can be someone in the middle, but the yes. CCP is going to negatively affect all of us. Correct. So it doesn't matter. And it's time everyone put their differences aside yeah. and stop I mean, complaining about that. all you know, all yeah. the lefties are doing this, all the, the right. right-wings are doing that. Stop, <clears throat> okay? Just stop. We have to focus. It's very important. China, the CCP cannot be allowed to continue to get away with what it's been getting away with because it's going to negatively, it already has, but it's going to negatively infect all of our lives, the entire world, okay? So I'm glad we can all come together, put our differences aside and focus on what's important. Nice. Uh, Three Queen says, come swing by Toronto, Canada when you can. I always do. Yeah. Save those Mass Effect patches for Winston. Nice. Excellent. As to be original... Pezzo and Milko trigger, triggered. Oh. <laughs> yeah, please stop. Pezzo. No, just oh. stop. Stop. No, it's Milko. Yeah. <laughs> Worth three five dollar dues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Dragon's fourth child, EU citizen here. Many of the warehouses of Chinese brands in Europe are actually located in Poland. Oh. Poland? Yeah, that's why. You have a chat. Yep. Maybe part of the reason. Cedar Mellon. Do you like The Office? Of course. You should visit Scranton. Oh, we've been to Scranton. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you hear Trudeau banned foreign ownership for two years? That's yes, good. my name is uh, pronounced Cedar M- Malim. I'm sorry, Cedar Malim. Lightseeker, okay. your message to Chinese Canadians, Chinese Americans, Chinese Aussies that give excuses for the CCP, even giving excuses in private conversation. My message is that um, mm. if you support the CCP so much, you have to ask yourself why it is that you uprooted your entire life and moved abroad. It's just, you know, you have to question yourself. It's like when I see South Africans living abroad, they can't shut up about how amazing South Africa is and uh, the South African government or whatever. I I question them and I'm like, okay, 
Honestly, if I felt that the South African government was great and everything was amazing, I would never have left, you know. So why is it that you're now a Chinese Canadian or Chinese American or whatever? What what is it that drove you away from the country that is ruled by the CCP? What is it that made you go abroad? Was it for opportunity? So that means opportunity doesn't exist in China. Was it for freedoms because it doesn't exist in China? I mean, I'm I'm not trying to be rude here, but what is it that drove you away <coughs> from your country of birth because i would not have left south africa if i thought everything was great if the government and the country was good so you have to question yourself because you cannot support wholeheartedly a government of a country that you don't live in if that makes sense unless you're off on some little adventure or you know whatever but if you actually like i mean you can but it's i, I don't, just think, i don't get it i just think <laughs> from from that point of view mm. there's nothing wrong with supporting the place you were born in and and you know, like if you're an American living abroad and saying, I love America, there's nothing wrong with that. But to fervently, you know, defend this government that's kind of opposed to, uh, you know, the Western way of life, it's kind of strange. So just ask yourself that. I'm just saying, it's a good conversation to have, perhaps. Global product and gaming review. Winston, this email, please come to Vermont. How, how about you arrange a meetup and broadcast from Vermont? Please inform. No, we will not do any more meetups. <laughs> yeah, it's We've a bit dangerous. We've discussed this many times. Yeah, but thank you for the Thank offer. you. I appreciate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Bugger off. Just wanted to say howdy to Winnie and Milky. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've already started something bad here. <laughs> uh, Steve Sun, the job prospects are bad right now in China. Mm -hmm. um, well, so. for, if you're an ESL teacher, for Mike, sure. My old coworkers are telling me that even with a PhD and work experience, they're having a hard time. Yeah, of course. Josh Jones, oh man, guys, I hope you guys do ADV Snowmobile. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be amazing. Uh, thoughts on Star Wars game Jedi Fallen Order? That's random, but actually, we love yeah, it. I, I finished it. I loved yeah, it. I thought game. it was really awesome. Mm -hmm. Ray DiMatteo, thank you very much. Matthew Hawkins, what do you think Generation A, born in the 2010s or 2020s, will become in China? Nationalist or proceeds be like their parents, apathetic, lying flat, or critical of the CCP central government? I think apathetic and nationalist. nationalist. Yeah, unfortunately. Look, it's difficult and you can't blame, you know, when you see the level of indoctrination that goes into the young children, um, you can't blame them for thinking the way they do. And it takes, it takes a long time to break out of it. Just think, think about it. If you're brought up in a very racist household or something, it takes a long time before you can see <clears throat> through that. Right. You know, and see that perhaps there's mistakes, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. Uh, why don't you go on mainstream media about China? You don't just get to go on mainstream media. Well, I mean, both hey, of let's the, just go on. Both of we our are, we? videos have, a, have made it to mainstream media. Many, many times. Yeah, exactly. Frick, does that even... I'm sorry, I'm just looking up okay. stuff. Um, Mikey Wright says, thanks for everything you do. If you watch... Oh, if it, it was watching you both travel China that made me pull my pull my finger out and finally do my bike test. That's great. Much love. That's awesome. I like yeah, to hear that. fantastic. Aaron Steger, Ramstein number one. Yep. Uh, Tongue fam, thank you very much. AG Play. Winston Dreams of Cotton. Cotton. Nathan <laughs> McVeigh. Apparently. Uh, Ty Sloan. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on relying more on automation? No. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know about that. Yeah. Return to Orc Monkey. In light of some recent comments, I just wanted to reiterate that you guys are doing incredibly important work and you always keep things engaging and fun and fair. You are Thank you very much. Keep it up. Thank you, Orc Monkey. And we appreciate that you returned to Orc Monkey. Yes. That name change did not suit you. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, what's China mean by win-win cooperation? That is puff piece bullshit that you'll win -win hear all the time. Win-win cooperation means it works for China and yeah. not for anyone else. Correct. Yeah. Mark Fuger, thank you very much. And Ryan Bach, welcome to PA. I'm based in Westchester. Oh, nice. Thank you. Have you ever been targeted outside of China for being openly critical of the CCP? I worry about this myself all the time. But don't let that stop you. Yes. Don't because let that stop Because that's what they want. You. They, they right. want a world that doesn't question the CCP. Don't let that happen. Correct. You know, everyone should be, every government should be questioned. Absolutely. It doesn't no what one gets a free pass. Yeah, exactly. Wolfman A2A, do you guys talk about the Boeing drone facility being built outside Toowoomba? in australia interesting timing soon after the AUKUS announcement love your work it is very interesting isn't it we will well, i mean yeah you can watch my for video tomorrow and uh, yeah for the alliance and uh yeah i think we'll bring this up in the future guys well it's thank you very much been a hell of a show. it's oh, been a hell yeah. of a show uh at the end of the day remember the message that we'd like to put forward as far as this evergrand thing is uh don't panic and don't expect a massive crash or an implosion of the chinese economy or anything like that there are going to be changes yes but the, the Chinese Communist Party could never allow things to get out of hand. And they will take care of it because that's what they do. And you'll never know about it because they do everything underhanded and they can do what they want. They can print as much money as they want. They can 
change the narrative of the news. They can silence dissent. So that's why it's so difficult to get a real picture of what's going yeah. on in China. Well said. Um, also, look at that kiwi fruit thing for what it is. They're obviously just trying to punish New Zealand. Yeah. Point the finger at foreign, you know, the foreigners again to say that they're the reason for COVID, as usual, uh, and all that other kind of nonsense. And um, I guess before we sign off, we have um, something we're obligated to do. Don't um, say that. That's true. <laughs> okay. We just want sure. to say thank you for um, our, our sponsorship. Sponsor, because it's amazing that we can get a sponsorship. It so is. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um, for those of you who may be disappointed uh, that there's no war breaking out, we've got a solution for you. <laughs> yeah, I guess Conflict of Nations is a free online PvP strategy game happening in modern global warfare. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. You get an exclusive gift, click on the link in the description and get 13,000 gold in one month of premium subscription for free. Offer is only available for 30 days, so don't lose time. Click on the link in the description, choose your country, and fight your way to victory. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, back to normal. It's time for us to sign off. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation, guys. It's super important. We're just, thank you for uh, putting up with us not being here last week. Yeah. Don't worry, we're here for the long run now. We're kind of all set up, so we won't be taking a break for a very long time. Um, so can't wait to see you next week, you know? And as always, I'm not going to cut myself off this time. And again, I'm going to do this by counting down. So here we go. Five, four, three,